Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. The concept of kingdom advancement is not a new concept in this house. We have um dealt with different series at different points in time attempting to help us understand what the kingdom is all about and um the concepts of the kingdom and how to advance the kingdom so we've we've taught several messages different dimensions different approaches but just a little refresher so that i'll connect with what i want to discuss today we have learned, and for those of us who are just learning, um, there are two dimensions. You may want to write it down again. There are two dimensions to kingdom advancement. Every time we talk about the advancement of God's kingdom, it is first and foremost important for every and any believer to be interested in this subject. If you are not interested in the concept and the whole idea of kingdom advancement, then it means you do not love God and you're not a contributor to the building of his kingdom. Kingdom advancement, generally speaking, refers to, before I give you the dimensions, um, it refers to any, listen, and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed to establish the Lordship of Christ. Listen, please any and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed right to establish the lordship of christ first across the hearts of men or in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities any and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed like an arsenal to the end that the lordship of christ be established in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities that's the definition of kingdom advancement so we say we are advancing the kingdom to the degree to which we are making use of every scriptural arsenal it must be scriptural to advance the frontiers of the kingdom by this definition, it suggests that there are two dimensions to kingdom advancement. Number one is establishing the lordship of the Christ in the hearts of men. This is very important. You will want to write that. The first dimension to kingdom advancement is the establishment of the lordship of Jesus Christ in the hearts of men. And then the second dimension is taking the culture the principles and the ideologies of the kingdom and using them to transform society so the first dimension has to do with a spiritual reality establishing the lordship of the Christ in the hearts of men and then the second dimension has to do with communicating his ideology across every strata of human activities it's important you know this 
the first dimension of kingdom advancement establishing the lordship of christ um, in the hearts of men will require what we know to be evangelism and discipleship i'm just doing a recap we have taught this the whole idea of what we know to be evangelism and discipleship they are the structures that were designed by god to bring men to bring the establishment of the lordship of christ across the hearts of men um, there are all kinds of versions and understandings about discipleship and about evangelism and this is not in any way attempting to interpret it in the religious way that we know because for many people when we talk about evangelism or discipleship the concept has been so abused it's like an indoctrination into a denomination and their tenets that's not necessarily God's idea of discipleship evangelism and discipleship is the scriptural pathway to establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men then the second dimension taking the influence of the kingdom his culture his ideology permeating society when we are able to successfully do these two things then it can be said that the kingdom of god is advancing within a territory or in a dispensation my concern this evening this night is um, the establishment of the lordship of christ in the hearts of men i want to just zoom it a little there and um, help us to be very effective at doing this by god's grace i think that we understand the concept of influence and how to take the the light and the power and the culture of jesus christ across territories we've spoken about different mountains and how that we need to establish the value system of the kingdom but i think that many people do not know how to establish the lordship of christ across the hearts of men so i want us to look at a few things that i believe will be very very important daniel chapter 12 please verse 3 daniel chapter 12 verse 3 media we have a lot of scriptures today so please you'll be ready for that um this will be more of a study tonight i just want us to pray later on but um, i really want us to have understanding i like us to read together it's projected as loud as you can one to read and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament uh-huh and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars so there is such a state where a man can turn many to righteousness it says they that be wise they shall be as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many not few in god's mind he desires that every believer would participate listen in this dimension of kingdom advancement as far as the establishment of the lordship of christ in the hearts of men is concerned largely we have left this ministry to evangelists we have left this ministry to those we call the fivefold they are the only ones who make the altar calls they are the ones who print tracts they are the ones who do all of these things and then for those who even engage in what we know to be evangelical activities they largely do not do it with understanding they just do it um in honor of a a a, a suggestion or a program by the church or some kind of structure that makes them feel spiritual you see the thing about the kingdom is anything you are doing that is not out of understanding you will not be blessed from it understanding is very important understanding is very important when carrying out any kingdom activity is is religion you see religion is an attempt to do spiritual things in ignorance and in the strength of the flesh and all through scripture you see that people who did even nice things religiously they did not receive any reward the system of the kingdom is such that you must take out time to understand the dynamics of whatever it is you want to engage in and then on the strength of that understanding you will now get up and act acting just because others are doing it acting just because you are told to do it acting just because you want to 
you know, ease yourself of the guilt of separation will not bring the desired result. That's why we do things for a short time and we do not have the impetus to continue, the drive to continue. Because we largely carry out activities, especially in the body of Christ. There's too much copying. Many people do not sit down to find out why. Why this? Why this? Why do I have to pray in tongues? Well, I just saw apostle praying in tongues and I think he's good for me. That's nice. But a time must come in your life where you must have a personal understanding. Are we together? Why do I have to tithe? I think everybody who I know to be rich is tithing, so I should just do it. That's not enough. Conviction is very important in the kingdom. You must have a, a sense of personal persuasion. It produces restful confidence. So no matter how sacrificial the activities are, your conviction sponsors the strength to go through it. Lots of people do not prevail over the things they want to do because we largely act without conviction. We copy one another, we copy men of God, we copy churches, and then we do not have the strength and the emotional, the grace to push it to the limit and to stay there until results are produced. The Lord will help us tonight in Jesus' name. I, I have been burdened, especially in recent times, um, the Lord has been putting this burden in my heart concerning the need for the body of Christ to get back into what we have known in the body of Christ as the ministry of soul winning. Are we together? The establishment of the Lordship of Christ in the hearts of men. You know, sometimes it's like wear and tear we can fade off certain areas of concentration while pursuing others in an attempt to look for certain things. We sometimes drift away from the things that represent the foundation, the, the pivot, the epicenter of Christianity and our mandate as given by God. Sometimes we can veer off sincerely but we veer off and then we find out that we are doing other useful kingdom things but we may miss out on that which represents the foundation of the desire of God. All through scripture, you see from the Old Testament to the New Testament, the Lord communicating his desire to draw men who have been alienated from him. Are we together? All through scripture, he would speak sometimes through the prophets and um, liken a nation to a harlot that has left her husband you hear scriptures like draw near to me and i will draw near to you when jesus came he used different parables that suggested restoration the parable of the lost talent the parable of um the, the prodigal son you know all kinds of um um expressions to communicate the father's desire to have the heart of people that have been rebellious to his way and his counsel turned back to him and I think that while it is true that this is not the only part of kingdom advancement, this is a major part of kingdom advancement. In fact, sincerely speaking, listen, in order of priority, kingdom advancement should first start with establishing the lordship of Christ in the hearts of men first before the systems. So if we have industrialization, we have civilization as a, use of, as a result of the practice of the culture of the kingdom and we have people going to hell, we have people who are not serious with God, you know that that is, that is, um, that is not balanced. Is that true? God desires first and foremost more than civilization, more than prosperity, more than education, more than, you know, people who have come into the working knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. God wants the hearts of men, the hearts of men to return to him in truth and in sincerity. Altar calls in many assemblies is almost not observed again. And the average believer may be able to boast of other spiritual activities like tithing like giving you know like service in the house of god these are very important aspects of kingdom activities but many people
cannot tell you that they have contributed actively to winning and establishing souls. Everybody say winning and establishing souls. Say it one more time. Winning and establishing souls. Every single one of us here, if I ask you to pick up the mic and tell me your experience, you will tell me of one person here and there who insisted until you came to the knowledge of Christ and for those who were already born again, one or two people who had to um, sacrificially follow you up until you are now grounded to a, an extent in the things of God and you are helping others too. But many of us are unable to extend that spiritual benevolence to others. So we sit back enjoying everything that um, has come to us through redemption and not extending it to others. And most times we tell ourselves, I'm not a man of God. Are we together? I'm not a man of God. So during a corporate evangelism like we have it, we can walk around and talk to people. But as a personal revelation, that part of your kingdom responsibility as a believer, as you'll be learning shortly, it is a responsibility. Listen, soul winning, establishing the lordship of Christ in the hearts of men is the responsibility of every believer. It's not a suggestion to choose if you want or not. It's, it's, it's like breathing. It is part of the component of your spiritual existence. And if we are not taught and pushed into that point, then there will be no continuity. A time will come you will find a whole generation bankrupt of spiritual things. Do you know do you know this was the mistake of many of our parents? They loved God. They loved Jesus Christ. They kept the values of the kingdom. But they did not think it to be such a big deal to pay attention to transferring the lordship of Christ to the heart of the children. So you can find a man and a wife, uh, you know, his wife who loved God so much but you will be surprised maybe a pastor and his wife and then you will be very very surprised that they have never actively preached to their child do you know talking to people about spiritual things is not the same as saving them you can discuss tithing you can discuss rapture you can discuss hellfire and heaven that's not preaching so that we are around people discussing the things of God which is good and very valuable but have we paid attention as to whether this person that I'm talking about has my son, has my daughter, has my friend, has my roommate, can I truly attest to the fact that this person is saved and if yes, is this person actively being established and grounded in the things of God it's a great concern in the heart of God many of us don't care so once you have a child who is doing well in school whether or not he's a serious Christian he can come to church do you know many parents do not talk to their children about God the children can learn around but to have a day when you preach to your child and lead him to Jesus Christ no we leave them to other people are we together now do you know it's so embarrassing when the closest people around us have to walk with us and never get to know Jesus and then after many years someone somewhere will be the one to come and save them how many children are taught about Jesus but never given an opportunity to declare his lordship look talking about Jesus does not save men talking about him talking about spiritual things talking about rapture talking about heaven talking about grace talking about whatever it does not save men men must understand and receive the gospel of salvation and be given an opportunity to declare their willingness to accept his lordship so there are so many people around the body of Christ but they are not saved and let me tell you what hardens them because they've been around the things of God so much. They know scriptures. Are we together? They can talk. They've done so many things that look spiritual. And so they convince themselves that by those activities, they are saved. They are not saved. 
at all. Do you know, let me tell you, even coming out, marching out to come for altar call does not save men. That's not what saves people. There's nowhere in the Bible that says the moment you come out in an altar call, you are saved. No. These are just representations that have been adopted by the body of Christ to help and guide people to be serious about their decision and then to have a way of getting their details and follow them up. But that's not what saves people. In fact, let me surprise you. Reciting salvation prayer is not even what saves people. Because the Bible says you must believe. You can stand and you are joking. You are just talking because you have to repeat what you have been told. And not be saved. And go back and you are still hell bound and a candidate of hell. Soul winning. Soul winning is not just saving people's souls. Soul winning is establishing them. Let me emphasize this. When you get people saved and leave them the way they are, they will not grow. And chances are that their, their, their lives, eventually, many of them will derail and even get back to their lives. Establishing the Lordship of Christ is more than just saying a salvation prayer. So you guide someone and he says, Lord Jesus, you know, I am born again. And you are happy. You say, this guy, I, I saved him. He's my soul. The key is establishment. 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 Very, very important. That believers not only come and bring people, but see to it that they are established. All through scripture, we see that the Lord um, has emphasized the need of people who are lost to come and to draw nigh to him. So every believer is called to participate in the advancement of the kingdom, but more specifically tonight, in establishing the lordship of Christ across the hearts of men there is nothing as beautiful as a life that has been changed transformed you know when when how many of you have seen someone you know was not serious with God and then all of a sudden you look at that person a few years later and find out that the person is a burning and a shining light there's nothing more beautiful than a life whose values changed a life whose ideologies changed someone can come and say i love the lord with all my heart that's how some of you were you are even surprised finding yourself in the house of god loving god so passionately and pressing into the things of god some of you know where you were who you were and all sorts of stories but by his grace look what he's turned your life into now so there is a spiritual reality that must be established in the hearts of men. Being born again is not just an emotional thing. It must come with transformation. It must come with transformation. When men are not transformed by the power of the word, then it is not the word that saved them. There must be transformation. So there's a lot of faulty, supposed born again many believers who claim they are born again and for many years many years yes of course i know that our growth in the spirit is progressive but at a point in your life i should be able to look at you and see your values altered the same thing you used to believe before and after no change the same way you used to live no change the same convictions the same ideology believe me you are not born again are we together now yeah there should be progressive transformation as a sign that the seed of the word of god has been planted within your spirit and if we don't pay attention to this we will keep celebrating crowds for instance and we'll keep looking at a society that is depraved men and women who god you see that's why there are so many members in church but very little people that god can find space to move with 
Why is it that we have millions of members, congregations scattered around the world, but God is still looking for people? Because there are very few people, I'm telling you this, who have experientially allowed the Lordship of Christ to be established in their hearts. They are the ones who have given him space to find expression through their lives. Before I continue, I want to ask you a very sincere question. Can you look at your life, you who was or were, and you who is now, can you note a noticeable, um, tangible transformation? If you cannot find a transformation in ideology, in beliefs, in passion, in priority, you need to revisit what you have called being saved. Say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Mm. All kinds of music before, all kinds of music after. Anyhow living before, anyhow living after. And you say it doesn't matter. No, it, it matters. You are not born again. It's as simple as that. There must be some degree of priority. The passion. Look, let me tell you something. When a woman is pregnant are we together when a woman is pregnant the transformation that occurs in her is mandatory and automatic mandatory and automatic except except she has not taken in if she has taken in it will begin to alter her psychologically physiologically there will be noticeable alterations that's how it must be if the seed of the word of god has been planted in you then there should be certain things your appetites your desires your values and most importantly your priority let me tell you how you know you are really saved is that your priority about god and the things of god supersedes every other thing yeah that's what our parents told us when they got born again all of a sudden there's this song that says um when all things that surrounds me become shadow in the light of you that's what happens a new life a new life and all of a sudden you look at the things that represented your aspirations and your passions and they look like shadows compared to what you have found this is how jesus teaches about salvation that someone had a field listen and then he found a treasure the parable of the treasure he found a treasure when he saw the excellency of that treasure what did he do he went and made sure that he sold everything bought that property and remained there but what we do is we take the treasure and go somewhere else that's not salvation you are not saved what i'm saying i know that is hitting a lot of us but i am telling you sincerely it is important important if you're a pastor here don't sit down and keep smiling at your congregation because they are smiling back at you make sure they are saved make sure that the people you are leading that the people you labor on day and night are saved you see that passion to see souls saved is not in many of us so you can have a roommate you can have a friend you can even have your loved one and not care there is no contribution from your part to make God a priority. No. Not saying anything, not doing anything. I cannot see any active effort on your part that you are making to turn their hearts to righteousness. Is God helping us tonight? It is part of our kingdom responsibility if we love God to be in intentionally committed listen intentionally committed not circumstantially committed if it just so happens that i find a soul that needs jesus and he says sir i want to be born again then you lead him to christ that's not evangelism that's not evangelism the same way people intentionally look for jobs because you know without that job there is no food the same way people intentionally look for husband and wife Someone comes and says, Jimmy, I'm, I'm trying to look for a life partner. You see how serious the person is? That's how serious you must also be with soul winning. See, this is not religion. 
there is a spirit the spirit of the Christ that is at work in you will push you to do that you see the gospel when truly received and the power therein will you will be too grateful to keep quiet find out people in the Bible who receive things from Jesus even when Jesus said don't tell anybody they were too grateful to keep quiet the madman at Gadara the Bible says he went to the Decapolis and brought the people remember the, the that woman who married um, six men and Jesus being the seventh man in her life the Bible says she left her she went to fetch water but she encountered something that was superior. She left it. When God is one of many important things in your life, there's an encounter you've not had. You hear me say this all the time. Listen, listen. The God being a priority, non-negotiable priority, under no circumstance, regardless of what excuses you would have should God at any point be second place in your life that's what must happen to you first you must experience it so that when you get someone born again you know what the person should become like when you get people born again and they do not yet have your passion you know the job has not finished you should draw them to a point where it eats them up. It's called the zeal of the Lord. Hallelujah. So you can stay 10 years. How many husbands whose wives are not saved and they don't care? How many wives whose husbands are not saved? How many children whose parents are not saved? Look at me. Over 90%, if not everyone, if not everyone including myself you look at your immediate family or your extended family you will find people who you know are on their way to hell it's a highway to hell are we together now yeah i know that you hear people say this emotionally just preaching evangelism but i want to tell you something i don't mean to scare you but i want to seriously tell you there is a real place call hell there is a real place today like this call hell are we together the bible says and books were open listen to me books were open and another book was open which was the book of life hear what the bible says whosoever's name was not found written thereof the bible did say he was advised to wait somewhere he was cast into the lake of fire that was burning with brimstone and sulfur that's what the bible says the bible says it is appointed unto man to die once listen carefully it says afterwards the judgment it didn't say after that a celebration after it is appointed unto man you see in my little life and the privilege that ministry has afforded me please listen carefully i have had the opportunity to be at several funerals i've had the opportunity to watch the bodies of people i knew were once alive now dead at that point brothers and sisters please look at me whether you have a phd listen please whether you had a first class are we together no matter what it is that you have had that you call your accomplishment in life i don't care what you have done i don't care where you have gone to at in five minutes not breathing it becomes useless has it occurred to you i can be standing here looking nice with my kaftan and no breath and i'm gone this body lies lifeless you will wake it you will pray on it you will prophesy on it you will pour oil on it the body lies down lifeless what does that tell you it tells you we have to focus on the things that are eternal listen 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 seeing then that the relevance of the things we chase and pursue are only relevant for as long as this body is alive So if I give somebody school fees 
that's good he's going to school if you say you want to marry and i give you five hundred thousand to help you and marry you will like me you will be very happy but the moment your body this body you are seeing can no longer host your spirit everything becomes useless jesus gave us a parable that is so touching about a man um lazarus and the rich man do you still study your bible or the job took it away hmm. there was a man who the bible says was very wealthy and there was another man who was lazarus i'm not talking of poverty and prosperity i'm talking of two people are we together now the bible tells us that the eternal destiny of that man was nothing like his life on earth brothers and sisters this is what the bible says if our hope is only in this life only in this life we are of all men most miserable have you seen them slaughter a chicken you've seen chicken one minute it has life trying to escape and you are very messless over it you put it down and in a few minutes the life is gone just like a vapor and that thing is lying down there and when you hold it two hours later you are about to eat it you look at this this was once alive now it's in your hands and you are about to eat it the same way like that chicken listen nobody may eat you but i guarantee you a time will come listen please very importantly a time will come where this mortal body will either be laid to rest or will be translated to another body it really doesn't matter which one comes as far as the glory that is coming is concerned because it makes no difference but one thing i can tell you is this there is nobody nobody who is not born again who has received the son who will make heaven one two there is nobody who has not received who, who has rejected christ that will spend eternity with him because it's not about heaven we are still coming back to the earth but the question is so that where i am there you may be only true believers shall be right our uncles are not true believers listen our aunties are not true believers we watch them we know they are not born again our colleagues are not true believers but we do not care we do not know that it is a responsibility do you know the last time i checked which was many years ago statistically eight people die per second how many people from when koinonia started till now calculate if we are still working by that eight people and part of all those people who died some were tongue-talking christians some were pastors some were prophets are we together now they've all died no matter what you think about them see this life is brief I, i'm waking us up to focus on the things that represent priorities for the kingdom god has priorities and we must we must train ourselves to adjust in the midst of all of the blessings i'm still going to talk about a few more things but i have to press this as a foundation so winning is not a suggestion so winning kingdom advancement establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men is not a suggestion it's not for pastors it's not for those who are free and don't have a job yet no take it down mike i want to sing a song don when song when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did i do my best to live for truth did i live my life for you when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great 
that you look beyond our weakness and find pure as gold in my reclaim turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life Every other thing in life only becomes meaningful when your eternal destiny is secured. Did you hear what I said? Every other thing in life, hear me please. Every other thing in life, I don't care what it is, is only relevant when you can guarantee that your soul is saved. And then you must extend that passion to as many people as the grace of God upon your life can make happen. Every time there is a bereavement, they send me text messages. And I get a text message. Oh, apostle, so, so, so has died. And you know, the first thing that comes to my heart, most times, over 90% of the people send me a text and say, Apostle, I know if you speak a word, he will come back to life. Frankly speaking, I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I've seen great miracles in my life and in this ministry. But my concern, listen, my concern is not so much about bringing the person back to life. Listen, as it is knowing that this person died in Christ. You can die in money. Where are you going? Mention it. You can die in education. Where are you going to? You can die in politics. Where are you going to? Die in an aircraft. The only ones that are wise are those who live in Christ and if need be, die in Christ. It's not that you died in what? You can die in worry, it's still hell. You can die in stress, it's still hell. Please, hear what I am saying. You see people dying all the time and we keep watching them. There are people today, every time you think of, you know right now, based on the Bible, except if there are other mysteries we do not yet currently know, I believe that there are many supernatural things that we cannot all explain but as far as the revelation of the bible and our understanding of it now has afforded us we know that those who did not die in christ are lost and gone they left their houses behind listen to me they left their certificates behind i'm not saying those things are not important but they are only important listen they are only important when the major things are in place. Is your father born again? If you hear right now, look at me, listen, wherever your father is. If you hear right now that he drops dead, will you rejoice? Will you cry in joy? Or will you cry in grief? If you hear that your mother has gone to be with the Lord, will you rejoice? Will you cry in joy or cry in grief? What of your roommate? What of you? Because there are people who will never take this thing seriously. You will always come for koinonia. You will always go to churches and do a lot of things. But are you saved? It's a very serious question. That you are working for God does not mean you are saved. That you have a Christian name, Joshua, Jesus our salvation. No, 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 no. As we worship you, let all the world come and see how the mercy we receive from you can set men free. That's very important. They need to come 
we need to participate in getting this is not adding members to a church listen listen now this is where i have a problem come when when we go for evangelism for most people sadly speaking we are just shopping for larger congregations now of course it should culminate into church growth but the foundation listen is to grant that this person has an opportunity to be turned to righteousness do you know i can get this brother saved filled with the holy spirit loving the lord and as i've gotten him saved i've gotten 200 other people saved in him are we together because this person now will take those values look how some of you a few of you that have really participated in soul winning look what has happened through your life to others i'll never forget one of our ladies years ago she might be streaming following right now and um her entire family they were not born again none of them was saved then she got born again and god granted her grace i think her younger brother also got born again and then eventually you know she kept pressing passionately and intentionally the mom now got born again it was left the father alone that man refused and said no way he will not get born again i know if you ask her what she wanted god to do in her family it's not to build a house it's not to go and build a house in the village and prove a point she just wanted everyone to be saved i remember very clearly like yesterday the day her dad was saved when her father was saved she called me crying we met around then in the campus chapel and she said look her whole family had been saved do you know when he was saved his family members had to drive to his place and they say which worry made you to give up what you were practicing and give your life to jesus if his finances we can sort it out and the man got saved under living faith so that 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 fire has come to stay the joy of salvation when we give testimonies and we say praise the lord i built a house somebody just built a house and he dashed me we stand up we roll on the ground but when we say praise the lord someone god said we just clap and please go and sit down because of our priority our priority i've seen a few people that have trusted god to be saved get saved and i've been surprised at the joy the joy that filled my heart who in your life needs to be saved through you not needs to be saved who in your life needs to be saved through you there are people who the prophetic mandate is on you to bring their salvation and you're not doing anything about it I challenge every mother here and every father here after this meeting go and sit down with your children if you can especially some of the little ones don't allow this our little the moment they have gotten to an age of discretion if they can steal if they can fight they can be saved talk to them are we together now you don't allow children just leave them around a child who insult you visitors are talking is answering back that means he understands jesus you can call him and preach intelligently and let that child say when a child has not gotten to the age of discretion the salvation of the parents cover the child but the moment he gets to the age of discretion from that's why there are no children in hell because the salvation of their parents will cover them god bless you we have a threefold participation let's rush quickly threefold participation there are only three ways we can partner with god in soul winning and the establishment of the lordship of christ across the hearts of men only three ways and i want to teach you now please pay attention because it has nothing to do with whether you are a pastor listen i think i should press this in this is not the work of pastors this is not the work of apostles and prophets and missionaries and mission agencies this is not the work of men and women of god this is a responsibility that is saddled on every believer it's just that we are not taught 
that when you are saved we teach people about their rights in Christ but we never teach people about their responsibility in Christ the only reason you have rights is for responsibilities you cannot be taught about your rights in Christ the inheritance that you have gotten and not be taught what your kingdom responsibility is with every privilege comes responsibility every privilege there's no privilege that does not come with responsibility if I buy you a car then you start maintaining it you come to me to maintain the car I return it back because it means you are not qualified it's a privilege but I, I, I give you that on the strength of an understanding that you can maintain it is that true when God gives you an anointing he expects you to press to gain the character dimension to sustain it that's the responsibility that comes with that privilege if you love privileges without responsibility then you are an irresponsible person so we have a threefold participation the first dimension or the first participation the first way any one of us can participate actively in establishing the lordship of Christ across the hearts of men number one is the ministry of warfare and intercession write it down the first participation that everyone and no one has an excuse because you don't pay for prayer there's no you, it's not something you go and wait for an ATM no the grace is there once you are alive and you are in Christ the ministry of what warfare and intercession why do we have to pray so that the hearts of men will be open to receive the gospel we are going to look at a number of scriptures second corinthians 4 please verse 3 to 4 second corinthians 4 verse 3 to 4 and then you give us first corinthians chapter 6 chapter 16 verse 9 the ministry of warfare and intercession look up please we are going to read a lot of scriptures we we'll have to be very fast but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are what so as obvious as these truths are when somebody is not in Christ it's not as easy as you think it is there is there are lots of things you can believe now because the spirit of God is in you to help you believe how you know it was the spirit of God is because you criticize this before you criticize praying in tongues you criticize a lot of things but now you have embraced it it's by the spirit it's not just by growth and maturity physically speaking if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost aha uh -huh, next verse verse 4 please in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not are you seeing why they believe not because although they are looking at you their minds their spirits are blinded lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them so you can see that man the moment you leave koinonia he looks at you and says now what, what, what kind of thing are you doing you sing for over over 30 minutes are you the only one I mean, can't you just sing praise and worship for 10 minutes and hurry up and go don't just insult them there is something that is making that happen when they say shout jesus or do this and you are doing and somebody's watching and say, ah, how can responsible people behave like this there is a spirit that makes spiritual things of non-effect to people who are not in christ that's what necessitates the ministry of intercession if your wife or your husband is obviously not open to the things of God don't hate them don't fight there is a spirit listen there are spirits that stand to make sure that people do not return to God in truth so you can see someone who is a smoker you will sit down and talk to him while you are talking to him the guy will say Kai, this will be the last cigarette and you are watching him you are even encouraged then you rub his back and say you are a good boy Two weeks later you check his pocket and it's not just one you will see a packet because there is a spirit listen counseling never saves people 
you don't counsel people into salvation that encounter with the seed of the word of god that breaks everything because it's not physical like falling under the anointing we have little respect for it if someone falls under the anointing it has a physical manifestation and so we say wow great power was on him but when someone gets born again most times we trivialize it because we think it is not supernatural enough the ministry of warfare and intercession have you noticed for those of you who live with so many people who are not born again is when you pray and return from spiritual things that there are hostilities have you noticed that the moment you finish praying that's the day you will fight with your father or your mother it's not normal there are spirits they respond just like daniel finished praying and the spirits began to move certain people in babylon to come and put a decree so you finish praying you just rounded up three days fasting as you are rounding it up there is war all of a sudden your food becomes salty madam you're in trouble no there is a spirit look men are slaves to the spirits that control or influence them this body is a is a dumb terminal this body is only an executor of whatever spirit controls or influences it you have to know this about people so that you can learn to love people this is one of the understandings that sponsors loving people it's difficult to love people based on the way they behave you have to look beyond that you have to access an information that is more than that so if your younger brother tries to fight you and beat you and you look at him and say i will kill you you are fighting in the flesh there is a spirit no sane person will do that when a woman carries bottle and breaks the head of her husband in response to no money or anger do you think that i know she thought she was just angry look at jesus and peter get thee behind me satan ah -ah. peter looks at jesus and says me he says look peter i know you don't know but i am seen in the realm of the spirit satan came and perched at your soul and took advantage of your voice to advise me not to go to the cross and he saw it he said satan desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not he said and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren because he will come and do the same to them demons speak to men they don't have to be under the influence of or, 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 under under the anointing there are many people saying nonsense you know it's a spirit that is speaking there's a way you see men talk you know that's not them an interchange between them and another spirit the same way you hear a man speak and you know this is not an ordinary man speaking it is got to be a divine spirit speaking through him so you have to pray when you religiously stand up to go and win souls like that you can return with casualties you must pray challenge those spirits that's what we do in koinonia before every service the prayer department is praying I am praying we, we clear the atmosphere so when we come we have already sent an incense of prayer and once we begin to speak the word of God penetrates the hearts of people like he's doing yours now and when you make the altar call you see people coming and you are even surprised seeing those who are coming because prayer and intercession listen when the spirits that influence men and blind their minds leave you will be surprised to see how innocent and fragile those people are are we together i once ministered to a gentleman somewhere uh, while they they used to do counseling at my place and this guy entered and he just entered and sat down and came in with the mother and the mother said this this boy I, i'm tired of him he's a terrible person he's this and that and while i was looking at him the lord opened my eyes and i'm telling you there was a spirit comfortably comfortably when i say comfortable you know that this spirit is not under pressure whatsoever and i saw that this is what makes this boy behave this way they said when this boy is angry true god is my witness even five people will not be able to hold him is that a normal human being hmm. the ministry of prayer listen before you do anything pray pray i think this is what talking about i'm not necessarily teaching on prayer tonight but learn to pray let prayer precede your action don't sit down and assume you know what to do pray pray pray
Pray before taking decisions. Pray before taking actions. There are spirits that are antichrist everywhere. The antichrist is not just a person. The antichrist is a spirit that is at work now. Opposing the purposes of God in the lives of men. Pray. You are going for a job interview. You just say, I got first class. You are not praying. You want to go and save someone. You are not praying. The moment you are going, the spirit is waiting there. As you are entering, he will tell you, see, I tried calling you yesterday. You didn't pick. You think I'm your mate. Say, sorry, I came to talk to you about this. Get out of here. And then when you leave, the spirit leaves and the person is back. You see people acting. You know it's not them. They may never admit it. But brothers and sisters, there is a spiritual realm. Everybody say, there is a spiritual realm that controls the happenings of everything here listen it is the day you want to come for koinonia that the person who is supposed to give you money will vow and say i will never give you money again why it was not about that it's because you are going somewhere and you will hear something that will change you you've got to pray People who do not pray become victims. I know we live in a time where people say it's not all about prayer. <laughs> it's about it oh. It's about it in this wicked world that we live in. You have to pray. Keep the forces of darkness where they belong. Keep the forces of darkness where they belong. You must pray. You must pray. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always, not often, to pray. So you pray. Shakata bakata. Lord, I'm coming for koinonia. I know that there are people coming with burdens and there are wicked spirits that will try to cause trouble for them on the way so that they will not get to CGC. There are all kinds of things like their phone missing, like their wallet missing so that they will stay arguing on it and not arrive there and hear the word that will change them. So we pray. We silence those spirits. And while you are, you just plan that I'm not coming for Koinonia today. Say why? Say I don't have transport. Someone else wants to come to Koinonia. In answer to that prayer, the Holy Ghost will lead the friend to come and say, let's go. Say I'm not ready. Say I'll pay for you. You see, that's an answer. It, it looked like action in the earth, but prayer programmed it. Prayer programmed it. How many believers live their lives carelessly and we are victims the purposes of god is not advanced because many do not pray when was the last time you took a prayer request and knelt down in your prayer altar woke up in the night to pray just for intercession father increase more souls salvation don't say me i'm the shy type can't you pray men ought always to pray and not to fade. Let me tell you, listen there are many of our loved ones I guarantee you, from now to December, if you will pray for them, you will be surprised what will happen they may not listen to you, but one day God will take them to one meeting where one man of God is and before you know it, the power of God will carry them in that meeting, the next thing you just hear, they will tell you I've been filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm two weeks old <laughs> praying in tongues Everybody say, I will pray. Say, I will intercede. Warfare prayers. Warfare prayers are not discussions. Listen, warfare prayers are not prayers of petition. Right? We have a teaching like that, hopefully next year on prayer, a series on prayer. There is a difference between supplication. There's a difference between petition. Warfare prayer is you taking advantage of all the tools that has been given to you in redemption. The name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the word of God. These are tools that are given to engage the forces of darkness and establish the victory that has been wrought in Christ over people, over territories. When we talk of warfare and intercession, that's, not the, that's one of the reasons. Listen, listen, hold on. That's one of the reasons why God gave us the prayer language of tongues. It's not just for you to feel anointed. It's a mechanism to help you engage in intense warfare. Intense warfare. Do you know? Let me just digress a bit and speak to someone here. You are where you are now. 
because you have not caused the gates of hell to give way we don't we don't it's not by physical strength this victory is wrought in the secret place one hour two hours you listen listen let me teach you how to pray you see you don't pray come david Dam. you don't pray blindly you use your mind like a like a picture to zoom the thing that you are trusting god for and you direct your prayer there are you getting what i'm saying the bible i'll show you where this is the bible says he can do above the things that we ask or your imagination must play a role in prayer the tongues is directing it but your mind is like you keep a picture so i'm praying for my family that's what is on my mind as i'm praying in tongues i know that these tongues is not for edification of my spirit these tongues is for warfare to that end yeah that's how to pray that's how to pray fire that produces results you lock yourself off your phone that's not the time to be pinging and praying you are not serious you pray with your heart see let me tell you i believe in corporate prayer but i believe in personal prayer there are certain dimensions you will only hit when you are alone hmm. there is a way you can be praying with somebody at a point the person will be tired and he will make you feel stupid you too you will feel guilty and say oh yeah let's round up father we give you all the glory has god finished with you listen when you are praying the holy spirit is not there as a tenant He's the direction of both the duration and the strategy of the prayer. You don't choose how long you just want to pray. You stay there till you command victory. I tell you, if, you, if that is established in the realm of the spirit, you can walk out and laugh and watch all the physical nonsense and jargons that happen because they have been settled in the realm of the spirit. Many people do not settle things in the realm of the spirit. That's why whatever comes to you physically destroys you. Unfortunately, it's unbelievers that know how to engage this the moment you speak to somebody and say see um you are not going to get promoted then he looks at you says all right manager i've had you the next thing the guy said can i take one week uh break i just want to go and say hello to my family and the person rushes immediately in the night while you are snoring your way the person is there and all his anger is in the realm of the spirit he's with the herbalist there he's baffing he's drinking he's saying whatever things doing all kinds of things then they carry your picture and do all sorts of things and the herbalist will say he's done and then all of a sudden the manager is sleeping in the night and sees a stranger walk up in his dream and say if you don't promote this guy the guy will get up in the morning and call the board meeting and say look a few developments have been happening strangely in this company and we are promoting somebody listen you who is the christian you are there angry and saying but i'm qualified and the guy is saying congratulations sir. ah you are now a great man and then he takes the title of whatever to the shrine and that's how they move forward there are people who literally live with charms as in they live with it they, it's a daily bread it's their version of prayer they know they must be in constant touch that's why you talk to them they say be careful though. you are talking to me you will die like a chicken and you too that you don't hey, I die like, I, and you find out that your leg is already swelling before evening you don't confront darkness carelessly until you have stamina in the spirit all this bragging we do in the body of Christ will land us in trouble will land us in big trouble jesus i know paul i know meaning there are some people that are not known can i say i must be known somebody say it can you pray in the spirit just in one minute sound an alarm to the gates of darkness know the fight is not physical the fight is not physical the fight cannot be physical it's in the realm of the spirit Victories are established in the realm of the spirit. The physical realm is only a, a realm where people act. They act what has been finished. Stop confronting realities from the physical realm. The job issue is spiritual. The salvation issue is spiritual. 
the stubbornness of your loved ones are spiritual stop wasting your time stop blaming people it's from the realm of the spirit that's how you command victory the ministry does not just grow by publicity it's in the realm of the spirit pray pray Kapata kata likatosh enkre to kata labakata seke teke 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 te reko to koto pakata labawa mata pras kata oh yes I am victorious te poto shola ba 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 every unsaved person we tear down those walls we command the forces that stop them from hearing the gospel every spirit that stops them from going to the house of the lord we command it hallelujah please sit down first corinthians 6 verse 9 thank you david quickly first corinthians 16 verse 9 Look up, please. Write these scriptures. I will just talk on them quickly and then we'll move to the next one. For a great door and effectual is open up to me. What is the limitation? There are what? The person wants to come. You say he stays close to Koinonia here. His house is just close by. It looks short in the physical, but in the spirit, the distance is far. It will take prayer to shorten it. Clear those forces off. Hmm. See, let me tell you. There is a way the devil can know you. Your voice. The same way you say hello and you know somebody's voice. Yeah, you can be known. Hmm. Because you are, you are a frequent uh, in, in, in network. There are, those, there, there are frequent programs. Those, you, you step into a package for those who are always calling many of us only call when there's trouble it must become a habit you must pray you are lying down and you just roll just for waking up for that one minute the devil hears it she kata kata baya. and then you sleep again let me tell you when when you are like that you will be surprised what will happen to you you will get up and just in a few minutes you are just sitting down and the moment the thought of someone comes he's not seen that's not the time to say oh i think i'm missing him no what is happening to him now we secure him marakoto sobadaka pray and then you wake up with any dream that does not look like it oh come on see i'm teaching you what i do if i'm not doing it you will know you wake up with a dream that doesn't make sense as you are waking up eh? before you wipe as you are waking up the spirit that was sent on that errand will know that one who has understanding is there i know it looks like i'm sounding silly but this is how victories are commanded so you look at men in the physical and you cannot see what they are doing physically so you will be angry because you expect them to to labor physically but the labor is in the spirit hmm. any church listen there are three departments now every department is important especially in koinonia but hear me i'm speaking to pastors there are three departments in any church and any ministry if the devil wants to destroy that ministry there are three departments number one the ministerial team strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter one the first place of attack of darkness is the shepherd the man of god or the ministerial team number two the worship team listen carefully they are vested with the responsibility of creating the atmosphere for the presence of god to find expression and the devil will do anything within his power to water down the efficacy of the presence of god number three the prayer department 
by the time the prayer and and for the prayer department it doesn't he there, there are very little things that kill prayer people big things don't destroy prayer people little things little things i like this lady why do you like her too and your entire robust prayer life comes under fire ah pride little things are you getting blessed any man of god who has spiritual sense will guard these ministries in his church or his ministry personally do you know let me tell you let me teach you one secret on how by the grace of god i administrate over e and i it's like there's something god has done to my spirit it's like a rope god connected my spirit to every department all the departments in this ministry is like a rope huh the same way there is i mean it literally there is a level of course they rise and fall they move up and down but there is a level that no department must go under the moment they go under i pick it in the spirit immediately i know something is wrong either i must come and find out what is wrong or i must pray or whatever it is if the problem is from me you know for sure a retreat quick the, 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 every other thing is cancelled that's how you sustain fire you must be sensitive and discerning and prayer does that second corinthians chapter 5 second corinthians 1 verse 5 to 11 long reading quickly let me just take our time and let's read quickly we have a number of scriptures and i want us to read them 1 verse 5 okay it says for as the sufferings of christ abound in us so our consolation also abounded we are reading down quickly please down to 11 it says and whether we be afflicted it is for your consolation and salvation which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer this and that and that now listen it says hold on it says which we also suffer or whether it be comforted it is for your what and next verse and our hope of you is steadfast knowing that as ye are partakers of the suffering so shall you also of the consolation we're reading to 11 hurry up please for we would not brethren have you ignorant of our trouble listen which came to us in asia that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God which raised the dead. Look at what they went through. Verse 10. Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will deliver us. Last verse 11. Ye also helping together. How? That's why we were victorious. Ye also, while we were going through those things in the mission field, when they were about to kill us, this is how you help. Ye also helping together by prayer for us. So it was not just that we were mighty men of God. There were times we were about facing death, but ye also helped us by prayer. Next scripture very powerful scriptures that's why i'm reading them philippians chapter 1 14 to 19 please let's hurry up or just give us verse 19 really our time is gone but you can write this philippians 1 14 to 19 scriptures that talk about the role of warfare and intercession verse 19 it says for i know i wish we could read from 14 it says for i know that this shall turn to my word how through your I know that the things that are happening around my life will eventually translate to salvation for me and that will happen through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ next scripture Isaiah 62 verse 6 to 7 the ministry of prayer the ministry of intercession and warfare cannot be overemphasized let's read it two verses i have set watchmen upon thy walls O jerusalem which shall never hold their peace day nor night 
ye that make mention of the Lord it says keep not silence next verse and give him no rest until what happens until he establish until he makes Jerusalem a place in the earth there are men who prayed Jesus to come and are the prophetess there are people who pray the purposes of God to find expression let me give you two more scriptures Romans chapter 10 verse 1 and then we look at 1st Timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 quickly please Romans chapter 10 verse 1 and then first timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 i'm giving you all these scriptures because I, I expect that you go back and sit down and thoroughly look at them it says brethren my heart's desire and prayer to god for israel is that they might be what was the content of my prayer they might be my heart desire for my family members and my prayer to God for them is that they might be last scripture is the grand scripture first Timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 very powerful scriptures first Timothy 2 1 to 5 I exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercession and giving of thanks be made for how many people for all men right for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty three reading down to five for this is good and acceptable in the sight of our savior who will have how many who will have so why do we intercede it is in god's desire that we not only pray for our churches but we pray for territories because his desire is that all men be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth last verse for there is one god there is one mediator between god and men the man christ jesus he desires that that man christ jesus be revealed and that will happen when prayer supplication giving of thanks be made for all men that God will save them the second way you participate in establishing the Lordship of Christ across the hearts of men the second way is through the ministry of direct soul winning through the ministry of direct soul winning Matthew 9 37 to 38 let's have the following scriptures Matthew 9 37 to 38 then we'll look at 2nd Timothy 4 verse 5 thank you Jesus God is helping us Matthew chapter 9 37 to 38 listen then said he to his disciples the harvest is truly what plenteous but the laborers are few next verse he says pray ye therefore that the lord of the harvest will send forth laborers that's the second dimension to be the laborer yourself the goers the ones who will make sure that they are participating actively talking to people if it means creating a blog if it means taking advantage of the social media if it means connecting people to the resources and the ministries and the platforms that will get them saved you are the goers second timothy 4 5 second timothy 4 5 it says but watch thou in all things endure afflictions and do the work of an evangelist you are not an evangelist but do the work of an evangelist fulfill your calling do the work of an evangelist don't say i'm not an evangelist i'm not called into the fivefold ministry no it says do the work of an evangelist john chapter 3 verse 7 very instructive verse jesus himself speaking 
I'd like you to read it. It's projected. One to read. Marvel not that I said unto you, uh -huh, ye must be born again. I make it mandatory for your eternal salvation. And so there must be goers, forceful. Write these other scriptures down. We'll project only one more, but I want you to write this. Colossians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. The verses of emphasis is verse 5 to 8. Colossians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. Then give us Romans chapter 10, please. Verse 8 to 14. Romans 10, 8 to 14. Quickly, please. Romans 10, 8 to 14. Thank you. But what saith it? Look up, please. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Nine, we're reading down. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Read on. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it talks about salvation. Read what it says. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. Twelve. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. So he's talking about calling upon him now. Then he says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be... Now this is the problem. 14. How then shall they call upon him whom they have not believed? The people... It's not like they are rebellious, but no one has told them. No one has given them an opportunity. It says, how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Then it says, how shall they hear without a preacher? There's got to be somebody who will take up that laborious responsibility to take the gospel to them very quickly the third key so that we will pray the third way you participate in establishing the lordship of God's kingdom in the hearts of men is to become a kingdom financier write it down so number one we see the ministry of warfare and intercession number two you are the goer number three a kingdom financier who is that they are the men and women who supply financial resources for soul winning financial resources for the gospel anyone who loves god and is interested in participating in building his kingdom and advancing the frontiers of his kingdom in the hearts of men God is giving you what to do there are so many people who are so idle in the body of Christ and they say I've not discovered my purpose there is a mandate that is upon all of us an intercessor a goer you are a laborer and then a kingdom financier let's look at a few scriptures Luke chapter 5 please Luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 9 I found this scripture a few years ago and it blessed me I want you to pay attention pay close attention I want to share a few things that will really really bless you Luke chapter 5 is a long reading just follow me and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of the Lord he stood by the lake of Gennesaret too and he saw two sheep standing by the lake. Take note. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. No miracle. No salvation. Next verse. And he entered into one of the sheep, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would trust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep. Yes, please. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, that's the reward he gets now for donating his boat. Launch out into the deep. Listen, please. 
and let down your nets for a drought this is talking about fish but we are relating this to souls now okay verse 6 okay verse 5 and simon answering listen he said master we have toiled all night and have taken nothing nevertheless at your word i will let down the net we are reading down to 11 and when they had this done they enclosed a what a great multitude of fish they were now winning souls and the ministry was expanding beyond their capacity now souls were coming but they needed a lot of help next verse and they beckon on their and they beckon on their they would have lost those souls because now there were more souls coming and they were holding more programs and the current financial level of the ministry could not take it and instead of losing the souls they called on certain people and he says which were in the other ship they called on to them come and help us so that we do not lose the souls and he says that they should come and help them and they came and filled both ships so that they even began to sink they called on their partners their net was about to break it would have been a wasted effort because now they do not have venue for prayer those who were born again did not have a venue for prayer so they called on Rema Chapel come to us as partners and give us a venue so that we can pray lest those that are saved be lost Listen, there are men and women and everybody in my opinion, in my opinion, should participate in supplying financial resources for soul winning, for God's end time agenda. You know, this, this thing about finances, every time it is said, most people, and, and of course I know that there are people who have... Um, done a lot of different kinds of things but the truth remains and hear me please that one of the responsibility i said responsibility you don't have to say we are raising offering please pastor alpha come and give ten thousand pastor femi come and give five thousand no it should be part the same way you tithe there should be a portion of your income that is designed to support the advancement of God's kingdom. That is very, very practiced in Islam, right? In fact, it's part of the tenets. They do it very, very well. That whenever you are rich, you know it's been, it's been a teaching that they grew up with. That part of that resource should be committed in the building of, you know, um, 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 all of the, the structures that they raise and all of that. When you read Acts chapter 4, don't turn there. Just write it down. Acts chapter 4, 32 to 37. The Bible says how that the early church, they had a culture. The Bible says there were people who sold their lands. There are people who sold certain things and brought the resources. It said none lacked among them. There was such flow of supplies. There was such flow of benevolence. Because many of them knew that part of their responsibilities were to supply financial resources. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a. I'm giving you a few scriptures. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a. It says, Cry yet saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, My cities, how shall they be spread abroad? Through prosperity shall they be spread abroad. And I will yet comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem. There is a place of financial supplies. Hear me please. For the advancement of the kingdom. And this is not a favor. You know, hold on please. The way many believers, the way many believers address this thing. When they have a seed maybe to sow to a man of God or to a church. The, the way they drag themselves and carry it and make it as if they are doing a favor. Do you know God is my witness? I, I stand before the God of heaven and I lie not. 
if you look at my financial statement god is my witness and i say this before the god of heaven whom i serve in the spirit more than 70 percent of my financial resources at this current level is distributed spread to the body of christ for the advancement of the kingdom believe me i stand before god in heaven how much money can you use for yourself how much clothes can you buy this is not something that i started doing now it's been there when your heart is committed towards god because where your heart is there your treasure will be also committed for kingdom advancement there are many programs i don't uh, they are not directly my business the moment i hear about it i see what i can do to support it i'll never forget early this year there was a pastor very great man of god you know nice pastor somewhere and certain things happened and they were about to jam him and the people out of the venue and god was helping them i know this is a man that loves god and fears god and he called me he said man of god we're about to get embarrassed on sunday there is no place of worship i said over my dead body not when i'm alive at least it's within my power how much is needed for this please send me your account details let me see what i can do and that man called me and was crying together with his wife they were both crying and said the lord will bless you see kingdom investment is one of the greatest ways to be a businessman kingdom investment believe me when i tell you when done with a pure heart and done sincerely and out of love is a jackpot in the realm of wealth forget that the result may not look like it's coming immediately my goodness you will receive answers to prayers you did not pray kingdom investment as a lifestyle not something you do when some money just comes how can i have money that someone blesses me and the kingdom never participates in it no way and it's not because of koinonia no so you don't think it's just a bias just because i'm leading a ministry not at all i consider myself to be a proper kingdom financier there are many men of god who don't give they don't even sow to the work they are doing they don't they demand for money from anybody but they never give are we together how can i sit down i'm staying in a house of 20 million and they need a carpet of 1 million in the house of god no way no way no way no way no way see i'm showing you things that you do for the sake of the kingdom that will move the heart of god to vow certain vows i learned this i learned this attitude from david biome is a man who truly truly is a is a principality territorial principality when it comes to wealth and finances his pastors are the, about the highest paid they are more paid than bankers they live in an estate this is a church but it came through giving there are many of you let me talk to you i want i'm, I'm not saying this i want to help you there are many of you when the offering basket is passing it's truly i say this not don't think i'm trying to manipulate you i fear god but let me tell you something i'll tell you why many of us never strike a chord and get the attention of god through our giving immediately after the grace you are going to eat buns outside of almost 500 naira and there are people you take 50 naira look at it squeeze it back take 20 naira oh it's the new one you squeeze it back you take out the old one and then you just say usher please come back and then you just drop it and do you know the painful part some of us are working class and you have not changed there are some amounts i cannot give god it's not pride it's the truth i will be wicked how much do i spend on eating please talk to me how much do i spend on eating If I'm wearing a watch of 10 naira and I'm giving God offering of, of 20 kobo, am I stupid? 
Won't I sell the watch or carry it and drop it in an offering basket? There are things you do that moves the heart of God. Make it a culture that kingdom investment is part of my life. Whether or not there is a giving program, find a need, create an opportunity and solve it. And watch the God of heaven arise for you. The third way we participate. There's a man, Dr. Paul Enenche gave the story one time. I think he asked God to grant him grace. He wanted to set up, he owned different businesses, but he wanted to set up one business specifically for the funding of the gospel. And God answered his prayers and he set up the business in, in hundreds of millions. Do you know 100 percentage me? 100 percent of the profit, 100 goes to the mission field. That's an unkillable man. I show you a man that no charm, no charm can touch. Let me show you a scripture now. We are going to pray. Very interesting scripture. Very, very interesting scripture. Matthew 27, please. Matthew 27. From verse 62. We are reading down to chapter 28 verse 15. Take notes please. 27 verse 62. Let me show you how Satan wages war against the finances of believers because he understands the role of finances in advancing the kingdom. Ready? This is the resurrection of Jesus. Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate. This is Jesus being buried now. And the chief priests and all the people who made sure he died. Next verse. Saying, sir, we remember that the deceiver, you see the spirit of the Antichrist? Because who is the deceiver in scripture? Satan. Now he's using a man to call Jesus a name that only Satan should be called. The deceiver, while he was yet alive, said, after three days, I will rise again. Next verse. Command therefore, that the sepulchre be made sure till the third day lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people he is risen from the dead so that the last error shall be worse than the first next verse Pilate said unto them ye have a watch go your way and make it as sure as you can right so they went and made the sepulchre sure sealing the stone and setting a watch next chapter in the end of the sabbath as it began to down you know the first day of the week came mary magdalene and so on and so forth next verse please and behold there was a great earthquake for the angel of the lord descended from heaven and came and rolled the stone next verse we're reading down please hurry up next verse verse four for fear of him the keepers did shake those who were guarding the tomb. I'm going somewhere. Just follow me. And they became as dead. Verse 5. And the angel answered and said to the woman. Fear ye not for I know that you seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here for he is risen. Now listen. The whole fight is because of this. Remember they went to um, Pilate and said we do not want this statement he is risen. So go and seal the place. Are we together now? For he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. Seven. And go quickly. Go quickly. Evangelize quickly. Are we together? Go and take this good news. And tell people what has happened. For he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you in Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. Verse eight. Now listen. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did wrong to bring his disciples word nine listen as they went to tell his disciples please follow me behold jesus met them saying all hail and they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him 10 then said jesus unto them be not afraid go and tell my brethren that go to galilee and you know they should go there and they shall see me next verse please now listen when they were going behold some of the watch those who were guarding they came into the city and showed the chief priests all the things that were done they went and said ah what you are trying to avoid has happened jesus has risen next verse 
and when they were assembled with the elders what happened and taking counsel they gave please read it they gave they took finances and gave people to say Jesus did not resurrect next verse and saying his disciples came by night and stole him away they gave them money and said go and preach that should be the message it's true we know he has resurrected but we use money to silence the gospel and if this come to the governor's ears we will persuade him and we will secure you you will lose your job just make sure you that anything you must do jesus is not alive we have given you the money and so they took the money and did as they were taught now listen to the, the, the dangerous statement that follows and because of the power of that money and their loyalty to it and this saying is commonly reported among the jews until today that's the role money played there are jews today that are doubting because somebody collected money how much more that you release your money and say let them hear Oh, they need a translator no problem we can pay for it there must be a translator who will speak in house and we will pay for it satan paid men to say jesus is not alive he's paying nollywood he's paying hollywood he's paying the illuminati he's paying musicians satan is still paying men to say jesus is not alive but there is a generation of kingdom financiers who know the purpose of wealth it's not just for buying cars and bragging and proving to people in the village they are men and women look let me tell you they will supply financial resources beyond imagination do you know when i see great ministries that i know are serving the lord in truth begging for money begging on tv if you can help us if you don't help us we'll shut out do you know how bad i feel you've heard me say it again there are television stations brothers and sisters that need only a million dollars and it will write off their budget for an annum somebody this night is about to sleep with a billionaire by six o'clock tomorrow morning whether it's saturday or whenever they are crediting one million dollars to her account she's going to enjoy it for saying jesus did not resurrect that is the prayer point of a whole ministry as anointed as they are do you know part of my goal in life is to be extremely wealthy extremely wealthy and the reason is this i already have a catalog of ministries catalog catalog of ministries per month the same way you receive salary oh this is going to destiny makers international this is going to rema this is going to this this is going to capro this is going to this this is going to this ministry and you feel the joy and the excitement and you tell the devil i am paying to make sure your head is being stamped ah listen and then satan wants to kill you the anointing on your the recipient of your money will wake him in the night he will pray his heart out for you to remain do you know let me tell you sincerely i'm a very busy person but i found out subconsciously that there are people that when they call me i pick i'm serious it's not like i'm a biased person i just found out that it seemed like i placed a lot of priority and i had to trace and i found out that there were either people who were dangerous givers to my life or the house of god whether i knew them or not it's a principle it's a principle finance God's business and watch him defend you God will stand and defend you see let me tell you anytime things are not going well in your life carry a seed and run to a house the house of God or a man of God and just go and drop it there I'm giving you a big secret you have silent I don't care what the challenge is it has died these are mysteries in the kingdom those who know how to trade the secrets of the kingdom stand through life you look let me tell you pastor you can stand you are quarter to die is all that is nonsense there are mysteries you engage in i show you one of the mysteries the house of god the house of god your money is about to finish take some of it and run to the house of god drop it there 
you are you are it's a covenant you are connecting the supply with the house of god I, this is what i do oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. victory belongs to jesus victory belongs to him Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. The greatest attack you will ever get in your life will be in your finances make a vow to advance the kingdom and see all hell break loose satan will prefer a church where the healing anointing is flowing than where finances is flowing because every other thing you have you cannot share is yours your salvation yours the only thing you can share is your resources let me tell you i've shared the vision here but let me say it again one time very clear vision I don't know how many years maybe two three years ago i was praying seriously praying in the spirit and all of a sudden my eyes were open and my ceiling just disappeared there's a big tree just in front of my place and when i looked at it it was no longer a tree i saw a big the only way i can you know a spirit that the bible calls leviathan right that looks like a sea creature like um like a dinosaur these kinds of creatures now i saw it like that it was a huge the eyes, one of the eyes alone was like the size of my head. Two red eyes, angry. The tail was not, it was like a snake connected to it. The tail was another creature and had its own life by itself. And the creature was looking at me. I was looking at it. It was looking at me. And this is what it told me. It says, so you think you can release financial blessings for God's people, something like that. And that was it. I know these spirits they know me I've seen them that's why he will not give you the job because God already knows that you have vowed that 20% of your salary will go for the kingdom and the devil will fight to make sure you don't get the job and you say what is it about my job it's not about the job it's about the agenda that the job will support yeah that's why Satan frustrates people. That's why you enter that exam hall and then he tries to get you blank. It's not about the exam. Does Satan need your script? No. He's trying to frustrate you because he sees the destiny and sees what will be advanced there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. You make up your mind that you are going to start giving. All of a sudden, you see the devil want to come up with all kinds of schemes. Listen. I preached last week's message as a word of hope for you because there is there is a rising church i guarantee you brothers and sisters not everybody is greedy again there are men who have vowed some of you here i know as you are looking at me you can give your last pin for the kingdom i know and such kinds of people there is going to be a transfer of wealth in 2007 i woke up under a very strong visionary encounter and i had four words audibly audibly massive kingdom wealth transfer the Holy Ghost spoke to me that there is coming a wealth transfer not just because preachers are saying it it's an agenda where he will make one person like a nation where people will build businesses and the profit is not for them they don't need the money it's just for the kingdom it's just for the kingdom you come and see somebody building a church and you say why are they stopping you come and look at CGC and say look look how much does it take you hear that they are they are putting a there was a time ben Hinn was looking for over i think he spends about a million dollars per week that's his budget a million dollars about 450 million naira of nigerian currency on crusades and souls are you stupid to spend that much money just on souls no it's worth it brothers and sisters it's worth it it's worth it for as long as i live my money will preach it's not only my mouth my body will preach 
my mouth will preach my finances will preach and i i don't know how many of you want to join me but i'm on a project to stamp the gate of poverty territorially territorially i say it in the open and i say it in the public it will bring a lot of criticism a lot of things will happen but it is for his glory and for his kingdom when people are organizing programs and they sit down budgeting how much one million uh, how much do you have i have 10 naira how much do you have i have 250 thousand and everybody starts coercing one another big men in many churches have become the holy spirit because they are the only ones who dictate how many pastors have to depend on people the welfare of so many pastors is so terrible look at their wives that's why many of you don't want to marry men of god when a man of god comes say i love the anointing but i, I don't love the state the, the persona is very discouraging that is changing say it's changing yeah. in the name of jesus it is changing i have seen books that should be written i have seen books that should go to territories do you know there are places in nigeria that they've not had the gospel i'm not talking of america in nigeria imagine if your finances was part i saw a picture i think on on, on the internet that touched me a little boy was on a scale almost dying uh, I think some of the in the, the the IDP camps there and the child was dying they were barely feeding him with whatever I, do. I don't know what that was dying how much is it how much is it David was a man who loved God he sat down one day and said how can I be in a palace and there is no house for God he said Lord I know that you inhabit the heavens you don't need a physical building however I cannot as a king sit down and there is no house for you I will arise and build a house for you God said you have shed too much blood I won't allow you he said no problem I'm still not offended I will gather the money let my son build it there are men and women who will do that there are men and women who will stand up and override budgets some of you god will empower you by january you come and say how much is the budget for bus transport from january till december just this is it just take it see greed nothing kills greed like giving in the house of god the cure for greed is not counseling the cure for greed is not saving the cure for greed is not doing business the cure for greed is doggedly pouring your resources if you perish I cannot tell you how many times in my life the Lord has instructed me to empty my account empty zero 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 I don't mean zero 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 home and abroad what use is the money if his kingdom will not be advanced when you see God blessing certain people find out what they are doing no don't just say God is blessing them let me tell you one day I was reading scripture and a revelation came when i read the scripture i found out that the last treasurer jesus had was not very faithful and i said lord i suppose that there should be vacancy of treasurer make me one make me your treasurer you know who a treasurer is the money is not your own but you pass it around there will always be a portion for you but you pass it around a distribution channel may god make someone hear that your current love for money will never give you finances many people think the secret to kingdom prosperity is business investment all of this there is a place for that but let me tell you all those things are rubbish when your heart is not you must have a deal with god it's a covenant let me show you a scripture psalm 122 we're rounding up psalm 122 verse 9 give us an niv please psalm 122 verse 9 oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Psalm 122, verse 9. Are you stuck, maybe? Yeah. Okay, please just turn it so that we we'll hurry up. It says, For the sake of thy house, let me just quote it. I desire thy prosperity. For the sake of thy house because of the house of the lord our god i will seek thy good give us an niv do you have niv if you don't that's all right niv says i will seek your prosperity so lord 
I'm looking for this money not just for a name for myself. No. Brothers and sisters, how many houses can you live in? How many cars can you drive? No matter how greedy you are, this is all the stomach you have. Hmm. But the kingdom, but souls. If you like, buy any kind of designers, it's finite. It's finite. Do you know what made the rich man a fool? His wealth did not flow. His wealth stayed. Keeping money and sitting on it is absolute foolishness. It's a sign of fear and foolishness. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Seek your good. How can I call on your name? And end up in shame nowhere. How can I bow down before you and then bow down before a man? Because you are my God. Tonight, you have come to the Lord. Whether you believe Him or not, He is still Lord. The earth is the Lord's. Listen, there are four conditions for anyone to be called Lord over a territory. According to Psalm 24 and verse 1, Psalm 24 and verse 1 gives us the litmus test if we must call you lords there must be four things that you must own number one the earth number two the resources the fullness number three you must control the mind system the mind control system and number four the inhabitants if you own the land and you don't own the resources, you are not Lord. You must own the earth, the physical environment. Number two, you must have dominion over the resources within that territory. Number three, you must control the mind of the people. By control, that means that it is your values that influence the thinking of the people. And then number four, you must have influence over the inhabitants there. This also is the principle of territorial dominion if you want to take over a territory for jesus please keep that scripture there this must be the four things you look for dominion over land dominion over the resources within that territory dominion over the mind control systems and influence over the inhabitants that territory is over whoever wills control over the land the resources, the mind control system, and the inhabitants is Lord. This is all Satan looks for. When Satan comes to a territory, he wants to empower men who would own physical land. Because there is a dimension of faith and dominion that is tied to land. This is for another day. So we know that he is Lord because he owns the earth. He owns the resources. The Bible says the cattle on a thousand hills even belong to him. The mind control system. And they that dwell therein, they all belong to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we together? Yes. So, if you believe in the Lord, the mighty God of heaven, and then you believe in his servants... The Bible clearly tells you that you have fulfilled the condition that makes for possibilities. Most people, listen carefully, most people believe in the Lord, but He has not become their God. You may be seated here all across and following online. You came to church. You're welcome. And that is wonderful and even commendable. 
But this Lord, who is a miracle worker, within a few minutes from now, we are going to be celebrating the triumph of light over darkness. The triumph of the power of God over mundane principalities and powers. God himself will flaunt his glory once again in the midst of his people. He's going to be signing a signature like Julius Berger will build. And if you are saying who built it, there you will see a big B there. God is about to do something and sign his signature upon your life. That everyone who sees cannot say this is your boss. No, this cannot be your boss. This cannot be your mother-in-law. This cannot be some politician somewhere. This one is God. But hear me. You can receive miracles tonight. You can celebrate what God is doing. Following across the nations of the earth. You can receive all kinds of things and leave. And if they ask you, who healed you? You can tell them, the Lord. If they ask you, who lifted you from this dungeon? Who broke this age-long captivity? But for us, we will not just say the Lord. I will say he is the Lord, my God. I can introduce you to him. If you tell them the Lord, you don't have a relationship with him to extend his power to others. You should not just stop as the Lord. He must become your God. He is my God and his name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. You're my king and your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Listen, you've heard me say it here, believers. Listen, when you go to a herbalist, when you go to some kind of necromancer or one who manipulates the realm of the spirit, in an attempt to provide solutions. Did you know that he does not need a relationship with you? You don't even need to know his name. How many native doctors have given their names to people? They don't care. Because the, the point of contact is just your need. It's not a relationship. But you see, when you come to this God, he's not just interested in giving you a miracle, a power, job, healing. Uh -uh. He feels it's an insult to give you those things first. The first thing he presents is himself. Himself. Not just his power. Himself. And he's not ashamed to come and live within an individual. So that you don't just call him the miracle worker alone. You can also call him your God. This is where sometimes, respectfully speaking, men and women of God make this mistake. We keep presenting to people a God that is far, and they watch His power, they watch His grace, they watch His wonders, and then at the end of it, we share the grace. And they leave having received from a stranger. They leave having been blessed by a stranger. Many of you go to the market. And you have a few people you call customer. They call you customer, you call them customer. Is that true? If you are going to go and buy goat or a ram, sometimes you go straight to them because you know. In fact, sometimes you have a relationship with them. You can call. Do you have this? They say, oh, you are welcome. So it's true you are coming to buy. But sometimes, even before the buying and selling, you can sit down. How are you? How are your children? How is everything? You will even have nicknames. A day will come, you will sit down there and not talk about buying and selling. Because your relationship now is beyond what you are buying. What God is looking for, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me believers. God does not just want people who just prostitutes themselves around him. Come and pick miracle. Come and pick breakthrough. Come and pick healing. Come and pick this. God, I've had enough. Let me run. Eh? When I have a problem, I, I, I'm telling you, even if I don't know you, I know a man of God who knows you. And God says, I will love you because love is my nature. God does not have love. He is love. And he cannot deny himself. However, there is a more excellent way. When he becomes your God. So that is, you don't have to wait until a koinonia service alone. Right there where you are. In your room. You can tell him, Lord, I thank you for your servant. But I also know that you are my God. 
When you meet Jesus, the first thing he gives you is not a miracle. Like a physical miracle. The first thing he gives you is not money, not cars, not a job. He offers himself. You can reject him. He will still respect your choice. This is the marvelous thing about him. You can say, Jesus, I'm not here for you. Just give me the job that I hear you can give me. And he says, well, I will give you because I love you. But is this all you want? I, I was preaching somewhere. I think it was in Enugu. And I was giving them an illustration. Imagine, for instance, let's say, for example, you have been calling me since yesterday. Apostle, I need to see you. It's an urgent issue. And I said, what is the issue? He said, I must see you. Imagine that you walk up to me. And all of a sudden, your attention is on my shoe or on my cloth. And I'm saying, okay, I'm here. And then, no, no, no. When I said I wanted to see you, it was not really you. I wanted to see your cloth through you. It's your cloth that I'm interested in. And you keep looking at the cloth and say, Taylor, just um, get this measurement. That's all I really want. Imagine the disappointment. All that call is just because you wanted something and not the person. So we pray and fast, God, come now. And when he shows up, we say, no, not your face. Just where is your hand? That's where I'm looking for. I hear that at your right hand there are pleasures. I don't want the left. Give me the right hand quickly. Let me get the pleasures and be on my way. It may look very funny, but Jesus is speaking to many of us right now. Believe in the Lord, your God. Believe in the Lord, your God. You have believed in the Lord, but can he become your God? You have come with pain. You have come with all kinds of issues. Many of us have written, you know, we've been having this miracle service for years, but there is no single month. Ministry has taught me that there is no exhaustion to the reality of human needs. Even if you were to hold a miracle service every day, you will still have people. That means when we say, if you have come for this week, don't come again. You will still see people as though they never received from God. Because the needs of people keep increasing. As one problem is solved, the devil now tries to come to cause another problem again. Just when you are celebrating, then he tries to bring sickness. Just when you are celebrating, then he tries to bring something else. But now, thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph. I sense in my heart to make the altar call now. In this kingdom, you strike when the iron is hot. And now that the Holy Ghost has spoken to us, He needs to become your God. Now, can I be honest with you? There are many believers who are not serious with God. There are others who do not even believe Him. Some of you probably were invited by so many others. You are in the main auditorium. Some of you are down all of the overflows outside or following online. And you are saying, Apostle, I... I, I hope that this your God is really God. The Bible says you can taste and see that the Lord is good. You shouldn't just hear. You can, there can be an experience where you taste and see. Like going to a restaurant, you can see a publicity. This is a lovely meal. We make this, we make that. You can actually enter the restaurant, order the food and taste. And then for yourself, tell whether they lied to you a man can taste and see that the lord is good can i tell you this many of you have struggled you have lived defeated lives anyone who does not have the immunity that his relationship with the lord jesus brings remains a perpetual victim of satan a perpetual victim of causes there is no hope for permanent deliverance for such an individual even if you administer the power of god the demons will live with speed because they know that there is no legal basis for the continuity of his freedom they will only wait for him and return back with joy the first ultimate and greatest deliverance the first ultimate and greatest healing the first ultimate and greatest prosperity is to come and receive this gift 
of himself god offers you himself i want to start a relationship with you here's what the bible says for god that same god so loved the world john 3 and verse 16 popular scripture that he gave his one and only john 3 16 his only begotten son that whosoever including you whosoever not some preacher not some whosoever believeth in him there is a law that that person should not perish listen you may be here and you may be the first person to make this decision some of you have had dreams where god has told you you are the one who he will raise to tear down these horns that have attempted to destroy god over your family let tonight be your night we will celebrate miracles signs and wonders but i need you to make this decision immediately for jesus i'm going to make an altar call wherever you are seated here under the sound of my voice in the main auditorium the galleries all the overflows down to the basement the overflow outside and those following online jesus christ is calling you listen you have a choice this is the beautiful thing about god he so loves you that he will not force you but can i tell you when love calls answer before power calls love calls power comes out of that love you are here and you are saying apostle if you will give me an opportunity i sincerely want to win that war tonight and then for some of you the devil is telling you with all that has happened in your life all that you have done all that your family has done do you think god will accept you he can always give you a new beginning and then there are people who are saying apostle i remember giving my life to jesus but as it is my life has gone haywire i need to rededicate my life i'm going to count one to five listen to me do not be ashamed if i tell you to come and collect a check here you will not ask whether your hair is in the right place or your shoe is in the right place run like there's fire on the mountain as i count one to five come to jesus one All the overflows. Please run to Jesus. Don't look at anyone. Don't worry about who is looking at you. Two. Apostle, I need Jesus, but I'm ashamed of the person who I came with. Please leave that person and come to Jesus. This is a matter of your life and your destiny. Koinonia, are you celebrating salvation? Young and old, rich and poor, come to Jesus. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry His presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me, mortal man. Awesome God, mortal man, awesome God. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry His presence everywhere. You are my, your mind is so full of me. Hey, I'm just a. But you are the awesome Come to Jesus. What a harvest. Celebrate Jesus. Young and old together. Hear me. The more people yield and genuinely hand over to the governing authority of Jesus the more a territory can be transformed. A territory does not just get transformed by giving people money to start skill acquisition. That is wonderful. But the problem of man is first a spiritual problem. The problem of man is not just a financial problem. The problem of man is not just an intellectual problem. The Bible 
all religions as a matter of fact it is in this one thing they agree that the problem of man is rooted in the realm of the spirit i salute every one of you for standing here some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears can i tell you this don't let the devil lie to you that jesus cannot give you a new beginning that's why he brought you here i don't care how it has been i don't care what you have done or not done when you come to him, you see, rebels don't come to Jesus. Rebels run away from him. So that you have come before the throne of grace. The Bible says to boldly come that we may obtain grace and we may obtain mercy and find grace to help even in time of need. The only thing I will ask you to do is that when you stand here, mean every prayer from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. Jesus is here. Someday when we meet in heaven, will celebrate one another and say thank god you made this decision if you are still joining them please come quickly in case you were thinking about it or you were still shy join them leave your seat and come very quickly don't worry we'll not take time when we pray they'll just have your details and you return back and we'll be ready for the miracle service lift your right hand everywhere lift it high above your head let jesus see that you are not joking you mean business with him please say this after me say it loud and clear say lord jesus, lord jesus. one more time say lord jesus, lord jesus. Tonight, tonight i have heard your word i, have heard your word. I give upon myself give my, ability my ability to save myself save. is limited therefore, therefore i hand over my life my destiny to you I believe that you died for me. I believe that you are the only Lord, Savior, and King. Therefore, I ask you to come into my heart, be my Savior, be my Lord, and be my King. I receive forgiveness of sin. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that from today i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never lift your hands i want to pray for you now some of you are crying let me tell you everybody who takes god seriously he will take you seriously anyone who claims that he did not make this prayer whether in the room or in the church, is not born again. If you are born again, you must have made this prayer at one time in your life. You don't naturally inherit salvation. You must make this, you don't wish salvation. You don't assume salvation. There is something called the assurance of salvation. Father, thank you for these precious ones. You have brought them, oh God, some of them are the ones you have anointed. To be the deliverers of their family. Some of them have gone through all kinds of pain and disappointment. Lord, some of them have come here tonight as their last resort. They have come trusting you. They have come believing that only you can save. Some of them have tried all kinds of options. They have tried friends. They have tried all kinds of things. And it has failed them. But they have come to you. He says, this is eternal life that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus, his son. They have declared, and according to the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that the power of sin, of Satan, of hell, and of the grave is broken from your life. Yeah. Satan, take your hands off their lives and their destinies yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Take your hands off their lives and their destinies. From tonight, I declare that you go forward ever. And backward never. In the name of Jesus Christ. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us in that we can be called the children of God. I declare that you are sons and daughters of light. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please look up. All of you, I want you, there are a number of you counselors. Let's be very fast because we are going to start praying. I want you to just um, go.
go to my right which is your left you will see the counselors just waving the placard please follow them cooperate with them they will have your details just for a few minutes and you will return to your seat and join us as we pray let's celebrate them all the overflows the same thing zaria also is connecting zaria make sure you are doing the same thing right now those who have made this prayer listen please if you made this prayer perhaps you are in your home your office wherever just following from your device it doesn't matter you can use the email that you find online there and let us know that you just gave your heart to jesus christ and there'll be a few people who will just follow you and follow up on you let's celebrate them in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now here's what we'll do we'll give them a few minutes usually i make this altar call at the end of the service but i just felt strong in my spirit so what will happen please if we need a few people to join the council also we'll make it very fast let's make it very very fast so that they can come and join us because we need to pray fire is about to fall in this place and in the name of jesus god is in a hurry to change your life god is in a hurry to wipe your tears hallelujah can we pray for a few minutes please rise up let's pray you are here moving in this place i worship you i worship you you are here turning life around i worship you i worship you we call you way maker miracle walk from this keep light in the darkness that is who you are we call you there promise keeper light in the darkness one more time i call you miracle walk promise keeper Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Please shout it after me. You can give them the mic. Help me, guys. Maybe two or three mics. Just give them. We can have it back. Say in the name of Jesus. One more time. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that every planting that is not of God in and around my life in and around my destiny be destroyed right now lift your voice and start praying are you praying every planting that is not of God in and around my life in and around my destiny be destroyed in the name of Jesus 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 i'd like you to pray 
He says, as for me and my house. Listen, whether your family members are here or not, you are going to stand in faith with them. Lord, as you are visiting me, wherever they are across this globe, let the power of God reach them. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. As for me and my house, as for me and my house, as for me and my house, as for me and my house. Hallelujah. 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 James chapter 4 and verse 3. Apostle James is schooling us in prayer. And he's saying that there is a possibility that men can ask and yet not receive. And he tells us why. Because ordinarily, everyone that asketh should receive. But he's saying there exists a possibility that you can ask and still not receive. He says, because you ask amiss. You ask amiss. Amiss means out of patterns. And the pattern is give us this day. You can't say give me everything. You must mention what you desire. He said, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them, and thou shalt have them. What things soever ye desire, no assumptions. Give us this day our daily bread. Are you ready to pray? You are going to open your mouth and mention everything or every area you need a visitation. No assumption. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Lift your voice and pray. No assumption. No assumption. It is feeling in your body, declare it. If it's a yoke that has sat upon your destiny, declare it. Hallelujah. 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 Now, here's how we do it here. Please listen. Whilst, whilst I begin to minister, for the sake of time, we have so many things to do this night. And I don't intend to keep us here beyond our normal time. So let me advise you up front, if you are yet to write your prayer request, we have a structure here that somewhere... Um, as we as the meeting is ongoing we we'll collate all the requests even those online you can do well to just send in your prayer requests and we'll pray so if you're yet to do that please do that number two if a word comes now please hear this i need to tell us this it doesn't mean that if a prophetic word does not come carrying your name or carrying descriptions that directly relate to you it doesn't mean God is not speaking to you. 
You see, the way God works is that what he says to one, he says to all. So if, for instance, God is speaking over someone who is trusting God for the fruit of the womb, even though it is that particular case I may want to see here, but it doesn't mean that every other person cannot connect. Are we together now? If God is speaking concerning maybe captivity over a family, and then if a prophetic word directly relates to you, please do well to save us time by coming. At least or indicate if you are not within this auditorium so that we know. These are some of the things that take away so much time. It's not a vigil, so we are limited. Are we together? There's a lot we have to do. We have to pray uh, for the sick. We have to minister deliverance and so on and so forth. But I'd like you to believe that this will be your miracle service. That this will be your miracle service. In the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, I'm, I'm really sensing, and, and it's a very strange way, but I'm sensing that God wants to begin tonight by ministering to those who are in ministry, ministers of the gospel, those who are currently in ministry, and this is what, this is what the Holy Spirit is ministering to me. There are people who have churches, there are some of you who have groups. And for some, they just came for greater levels of fire. You don't have to come out. I want to pray for you. And for some of you, you have the call of God upon your life, but you do not even know. And the Holy Ghost has been looking for you. Some of you, you are the ones destined to lift your family. And God has been speaking to you. This is the miracle service where He finally finds you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I pray right now for everyone who is in ministry and has not been producing the kind of results that the Bible says should follow. Or those who have the genuine call of God upon their lives. Please, I want you to bring those under the anointing as I pray this prayer. Right now, in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, I stretch my hands. May fire from heaven rest upon individuals. Let there be an ignition from the realm of the spirit. Young and old, inside and outside. I count three. One, two, three. Take that fire now. Take that fire now. Please bring them out very quickly. Take that fire now. In the name of Jesus. Any church that is not growing. Any man of God who is struggling in ministry. I bring you the power of the Holy Ghost. Here at this miracle service. In the name of Jesus Christ intercessory groups all kinds of platforms that don't seem to be working in the name of jesus some of you your ministries to your families there are altars that god is raising you to fight and tear down i decree and declare young and old may that power come upon you in the name of jesus may that power come upon you in the name of Jesus, may that power come upon you. In the name of Jesus, may that power come upon you. In the name of Jesus, ministry with evidence, ministry with proof. Go and be a deliverer with fire. Go and be a deliverer. It doesn't matter what yoke has sat upon your destiny and your families. I decree and declare right now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, let there be that impartation of grace, impartation of fire upon you, impartation of power upon you. Prophetic ministries, prophetic ministries, prophetic ministries, Kebarakata, multiplied visions, prophetic ministries, particularly prophetic ministries whatever has beclouded your vision so that you don't see again 
so that you don't hear again receive fire upon your destiny fire upon your destiny the hearing ear the seeing eye the hearing ear the seeing eye in the name of jesus let there be an ignition by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Lord is speaking to me about prophetic ministries. All of you who are out here, I decree and declare, according to the word of the Lord, step into the grace that has been apportioned for you. In the name of Jesus, step into that grace. Step into that grace right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now, alongside these people, there are a group of people I want to pray for. Please hear me. The Bible says, Saviors shall come out of Zion. Can I tell you, every family, every territory has men and women who have been selected. God wants to permeate families and bring deliverance. But there are individuals that God must find. Wherever they are here, if you are the one anointed and ordained, that God will raise you to wipe the tears of your family. Wherever you are under the sound of my voice, at the bakato, at the count of three, may God locate you. It's time for your family to arise. May God locate you. May God locate you. Young and old, saviors, arise by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Arise. 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 In the name of Jesus. It has nothing to do with gender, male or female. If God has raised you, whether you are a Gideon or Deborah, may the power of God come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. All of you in front, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, let it be a new season for you now. Let it be a new season for you now. Let it be a new season for you now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please let them go back to their seats quickly if they can. Let them go back to their seats. I want to pray a very serious prayer right now. This is a miracle service. And the prayer I'm about to pray is a major prayer. Can I tell you this? Truly, truly, causes are real. Truly, yokes are real. Embargoes are real yes the power of god is there to deliver but it does not happen automatically this is why you are here i want you to pay attention there are patterns i will never stop praying this prayer there are families under the sound of my voice the same thing everybody faces in the family if it's retrogression it happens to everybody if it's delayed it happens to everybody right now i want to pray at the count of three whether you are inside or outside, I'd like you to shout that name, Jesus. And as you shout, the power of the Holy Ghost will rest marvelously upon you. There are spirits that will not let destinies go free. Great people, some of you have traveled abroad and even returned back. Nothing is changing. My Bible says, therefore, God has so highly exalted him. And giving him a name that is above every other name. That at the mention of that name. Every family here. Having any charm. Or any cause. Or any ordinance. Any fraternity with darkness. At the count of three. May the fire of the Holy Ghost. Land upon that family. Are you ready to shout. At the count of three. One. Two. Three. Shout Jesus. Right now. Yokes. Causes, I break causes, generational causes, patterns of darkness. Be destroyed now, 
be destroyed now be destroyed now bring them out be destroyed now in the name of jesus every spirit that will not let you go i decree and declare be delivered now in the matchless name of jesus please bring them out quickly help the ushers whether you are an usher or not please help them hallelujah we are still praying we are still praying the lord is delivering many 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 people right now every altar that is sitting on anybody's life yokes that will not let you go some of you have dreams you go to bed in the night and yet this oppression comes right now by the power of the holy spirit may that fire locate you wherever you are hallelujah please pay attention there is a marvelous work that god is doing here there are some of you your oppressions have come in dreams you go to bed in the night and all kinds of dreams going back to secondary schools writing exams that don't finish eating all kinds of things fraternizing with dead spirits right now at the count of three makatos kata anyone's destiny under the siege of dreams i declare at the count of three shout jesus again one two three let there be deliverance right now let there be deliverance right now let there be deliverance right now by the power of the holy ghost be broken by the blood of the lamb be broken by the blood of the lamb be broken by the blood of the lamb hallelujah hallelujah i'm hearing a name mabel mabel like m-a-b-e-l is there someone like that we have to hurry up because i want to pray for the sick I'm hearing a name, Mabel. Mabel. You are wearing something like her tie. It's like lime or it's, I don't know what color it is. Is there someone like that? Mabel. What's your name? Where are you from? Is the mic working? Hallelujah. What's your name? Huh? Mabel. You are Mabel. You are Mabel too. Who is from Cross River? I want to pray for you. Where are you from? Where in Cross River? Okay. I want to pray for you. Because I'm looking at you and I'm seeing fire. And the Lord wants to bring deliverance to your family. You believe that? I want to pray for you. There's an elderly woman now. I'm seeing the power of God come on that elderly woman. You are not young. I'm seeing the power of God come on you. The Lord is bringing salvation to your family. Your prayer has been your children in the name of Jesus. I don't know who that person is, but right now, I'm seeing power from heaven. Please bring the person here. My sister, let me pray for you very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree over your life and over your family, everything that has a connection to ancestry, by the power of the Holy Spirit, let it be gone right now. Let it be gone right now. It will not follow you to your marriage. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be gone right now. In the name of Jesus and to you please just help them make sure they don't injure themselves to you the other lady mabel i stretch my hands in jesus name let there be a supernatural visitation for your family in the name of jesus i decree and declare that everything that is not the planting of the lord let it give way right now in the name of jesus let it give way right now 
in the name of Jesus. Let it give way right now. Bring for me the person who shouts now in this main auditorium, loud under the power of God. I just heard that sound in my spirit, a loud shout. This lady, there's a lady, that, that lady placing her hand on her neck. Please tap her for me. Lift your hands. I'm seeing fire coming on you. And the Lord is saying he's removing everything that stands as a barrier. I don't know what it is, but right now, let that fire come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. That barrier is over now. In the name of Jesus Christ. That embargo is lifted now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Is there someone with the name Jumai? I'm hearing a name Jumai. Jumai, this is what I'm hearing. Please, if that is not your name, please don't come out. Please, let's, everybody will be touched. Let's hurry up. Because I want, Jumai, who is that? Is there someone with such a name? Jumai, this is what I'm hearing. That, that's a northern, most likely. Please verify, make sure that you. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Hallelujah The power of God is coming on a businessman now I've seen that everything has failed this year you are into real estate or so this is what I'm real estate or something that has to do with land and construction but I'm seeing the power of God rest upon you now and the Lord is saying he's rewriting your story is rewriting your story. I don't know where that person is, but Karus Kati Lakatoshka Brendegate Embrakatos Kati Balakata. May the power of the Holy Spirit touch you right now, wherever you are, in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever, he, please help him. Wherever you are, in the name of Jesus, let this be the beginning of a new season. This man, come. You, this man, please come. God is about to change your life. Come. What do you do? What do you do? I'm into real estate. You are into real estate. Stand here. God is about to change your life, my friend. You believe in miracles? Believe, oh, please believe. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Oh, there is something called a prophetic advantage. And in the name of Jesus, by the privilege of God's grace, I stretch my hands and I declare, may the power of the Holy Spirit shift you to a new season shift you to a new season every limitation connected to what you do god who located you and i'm using him as a point of contact if there is anyone here that has been grounded in business that the only thing you see is shame and reproach may that embargo be broken now let it be broken now hallelujah why are they here okay i'm going to pray for you why is he here sir who brought him out here? Your name is Jumai? Oh, you just came out on your own. It's okay, I'll pray with you. No problem. It's all right. Huh? Sir, look at me. Don't be ashamed. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! Let it be over now. Keep him there. In the name of Jesus, every oppression and every yoke over your life, now, I'm seeing something that looks like I'm seeing a serpent all around this man. I declare right now. The power of God is coming on one of you right now. I just saw like light. Cabrande. Christ. God is visiting an ancient altar. This is what I'm seeing. Let it be broken right now. Now! The name of Jesus Christ. Let it be broken by the power of the Holy Spirit. For every one of you who has come out here, I'm seeing the Lord bringing I'm seeing this map I always see now. 
and I'm seeing Nasarawa State. Nasarawa State. The power of God is visiting families from Nasarawa State. This is what I'm saying. I stretch my hands right now. The power of God is going to begin to come upon families. There are yokes connected to those regions. I declare right now, every altar. Let there be deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. Let there be deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. Let there be deliverance right now. I break those yokes. I break those yokes in the name of Jesus Christ. For all of you who are here, madam, please lift your hands. Look at me. Shame and reproach. That's what I'm hearing. And reproach. Let it leave you now. Never to return to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, where are you coming from? Who is... Huh? Kogi State. Hmm. Did you come here alone? Yes, sir. You came here alone. Whatever connects you to the dead, dead, like dead people, I'm praying this, and this is not just for her. I'm seeing the number one seven. That everything that connects people to dead people, they come to you in your dreams. When you are sleeping, calling you, they won't let you rest. This is the spirit of death over families. I'm, I'm going to pray for you, Mama. But I'm using it as a point of contact. Please take what I'm saying seriously. If there is anyone here or any family here appointed unto death, right now I declare, as I'm praying for our mother here, may that, that arrow that has been sent to that family let it return back to any devil that sent it let it return let it return to every devil that sent it let it return to every devil that sent it let it return to every devil that sent it in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you mama right now I stretch my hands let there be a miracle. I separate you from the spirit of death. In the name of Jesus. And all of you who are in front here, for whatever reason you are out, in Jesus' name, may God give you a visitation. May God give you a visitation. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, I sense such a strong healing anointing. I know that God wants to really, really heal the sick. We'll hurry up so that we'll start ministering to the sick. But I want to pray. Please stop this woman for me. This mama. Please don't be embarrassed man. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Please stand up. Stand up. The Lord wants to remove reproach. Where are you coming from ma? Don't, don't cry madam. Don't worry. You are, you are here before the Lord. You see, sometimes you may not know what kind of oppression people go through. You see people laughing, clapping hands, lifting holy hands. But there are people who are standing, it's like they are standing on hot coals while they worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you, madam. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands towards you. You were going and the Lord said I should stop you. I declare that shame and reproach over your family and over your own life the spirit i want to pray here there is a spirit that makes people to be misunderstood where your evil becomes good your good becomes evil or there are people here it has happened to many people even in their workplace you do good things but people misinterpret what you are doing you know, when Bishop Oyedeko started ministry of Father and the Lord, this is what he said. That one time they were praying and the church was not growing. And he said, the Lord asked them, please help those under the anointing. It's a serious prayer I want to pray now. He said that the Holy Spirit asked him to come out. And he stood and he looked up and in a vision he saw a thick layer of darkness. And he said, this is the blindfolding demon that misunderstands what you are doing. And he says, now rebuke it. And he rebuked it. And it folded and went. 
and he produced a poster he said come and see and that was it i want to pray for someone here the bible says do not let your good be evil spoken of i pray for you if there is any manipulation over your destiny that makes every good thing you do to be misunderstood i break that spirit from off your life now i cut that spirit away from your destiny now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ madam i declare this is your don't cry this is your liberty right now by the power of the holy spirit i'm seeing a family my god ah you are the only child not like maybe male or female you are the only child in that family and i'm seeing the spirit of hardship the lord wants to bring deliverance to that family right now right now in the name of jesus i don't know who that is if 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 there is someone like that please let me know i want to pray for you you are you are the only child only child you are the only child i want to pray for you in the name of jesus christ only child i want to pray in the name of jesus please stretch your hands towards me i decree and declare the embargo of hardship and suffering and everything that has kept your please make sure you are coming out for this situation this situation don't just come out at random i stretch my hands right now and i decree and declare honestly the power of god is coming on you in the mighty name of jesus every connection with yokes of ancestry let it be broken now 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 every yoke sitting on your destiny that you will not move forward i prophesy to you advance in the name of jesus advance in the name of jesus only child parandas kadi lakotosia advance in the name of jesus advance in the name of jesus advance in the name of jesus can you imagine only child everyone here i'm praying let them go release their destinies now i'm praying for everybody but there are two people particularly here in front i'm praying this prayer for release their destinies right now release their destinies right now release their destinies right now in the mighty and marvelous name of jesus release their destinies right now everything holding you down tying you down be delivered in the name of jesus hallelujah let this be permanent in your life and i pray for you out of you that looks like you are the only one may nations arise may nations arise may nations arise may nations arise may nations arise, may nations arise. in the name of jesus Please return back to your seat. Let's pray for the sick now. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Eh. look up many years ago i'm about to pray for the sick i was caught up in the realm of the spirit and i had a vision 
it was like it was locked down and when i was there i saw people who were very sick people who were, some of them were lying down stretchers and when i looked at it a voice spoke to me from that vision and he says go and heal them all and from that time till forever god has not left himself a witness please hear me some of you are standing here for yourself you are standing here for your loved ones i want you to believe that god is a miracle worker within the few minutes we have here's what we're going to do very quickly some of you already this mass ministration has brought all kinds of healing for you and even notable miracles everywhere this is a miracle service as i pray for you and rebuke that sickness here's what i want you to do be bold to do what you could not do before and the moment you find out that there is a miracle for you don't be ashamed don't be afraid i want you to quickly quickly make your way whether you are up the gallery whether you're around in fact some of you as you check yourself now probably i administer to you and you found out that there is a miracle happening to you i like you to come and stand either by my left here or by my right and whilst we are doing that concurrently please i'd like you to pass your prayer request to the last person at the aisle whether left or right and then pr uh, um, or, or ushers all the officials please do well make sure that you collate them and let's have it very quickly let me just give you a minute to tidy up your prayer request and then you stand up and we'll pray for the sick we'll pray for the sick very quickly you can take the second half if you are yet to receive your uh, a form or if you are done just pass it to the person do it believing do it believing that god is visiting you Please pass it to the last person. Can you arise? I want to pray for the sick now. Please let's be upstanding. Thank you for your patience. We want to pray for the sick now. I believe in miracles. I have experienced the healing power of Jesus myself in my own life. Please lay your hands right now. Those who are watching from your homes, this is a time to receive. He is healer lay your hands everywhere you are trusting god for a miracle if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest if you're standing in for someone or with someone go ahead and make that contact everywhere outside make sure you participate please believe god for healing of anything and everything Now unto the one upon the throne We raise a sound We raise a sound For you are God and God alone Hallelujah Hallelujah Father, you anointed us to be extensions of your healing power to the nations. And right now, I pray over your people. Many have come desiring to receive. Many have come desiring to be healed of all kinds of diseases and sicknesses. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and even with power. And it says he went about doing good and healing they that were oppressed. Right now I decree and declare, everyone here who is oppressed, I command the spirit that is back of any infirmity to be gone now in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. 
I declare be healed in Jesus name my God already I'm seeing the Lord heal someone's someone's limbs I don't know if you're on a wheelchair or you're on crutches but a miracle is happening right now in the name of Jesus Christ let there be healing for you right now let there be healing for you right now let there be healing for you right now I decree and declare pain on the head severe migraines the Lord is healing right now pain around the joint areas all around the arm in the name of Jesus let there be a miracle right now now hear me every cancer cancer or any kind of cancerous growth we curse you now in the name of Jesus HIV AIDS be healed in the name of Jesus everyone who cannot see in the name of Jesus partial or total blindness I command that eyes to open now in Jesus name anyone who cannot walk I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit let life and strength come upon your limbs now in Jesus name there are many people connected from several hospitals I decree and declare in the name of Jesus let the power of God from here through the airwaves let it come upon you and bring you life heart palpitations be healed in the name of Jesus growths around the body anywhere around the body we command you to give way right now in Jesus name there's someone you are having severe pain you've gone to the hospital it's like they said something is happening to your I don't know if it's your nerves or just the bones around your spine right now I'm declaring to you let the healing power of Jesus touch you now someone you have like a skin infection I'm seeing several things are happening around your skin it's not necessarily lack of hygiene is that something has happened I don't know some demonic thing I declare let there be healing for you right now the Lord is showing me people just the throat area it looks like you swallowed something but it has refused to pass down and it's terribly discomforting the power of God is touching you right now every pain around the chest area be healed right now there's there's a lady the power of god is touching a lady you have a lump in fact multiple lumps on the left side of your breast but as i'm praying for you the power of god is touching you right now that devil leaves your body forever in the name of jesus christ ha, this is interesting the lord is healing a man of impotency in the name of Jesus Christ I speak it by the power of the Holy Spirit let there be supernatural healing for you right now let there be supernatural healing for you right now regardless the medical report we change it now in the name of Jesus someone's left ear someone's left ear in the name of Jesus Christ be healed right now by the power of the Holy Ghost the Lord is speaking to me that there is someone you are having the early stages of prostrate prostrate cancer you are a man in the name of Jesus I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit wherever you are let there be healing for you right now let there be healing for you right now movement around the body I'm seeing someone having movement. Sometimes you literally feel like something is moving around your body. Help them please. Help her. I command that devil to leave you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. What is that condition where you cannot sleep? In the name of Jesus Christ. Apnea. Sleep apnea. I'm seeing at least three people having that condition, just rolling, rolling on the bed, but never getting to sleep. You are unable to sleep, even if it's for an hour. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are, whether in this auditorium or outside, I declare, be healed right now. Be healed right now. Someone just around your wrist, 
the Lord is bringing a miracle for you. I don't know if it's that you, was it a, 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 some kind of injury or whatever it is. I want you to check it right now. The power of the Holy Spirit is stepping upon you. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone who has like malaria or typhoid. You've treated it again and again and it has refused to go. In fact, you came here feeling so sick. Right now, I'm praying for you. May the power of the Holy Spirit touch you where you are. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, any pain around the bone region, whether neck, hand, the, the waist area, I declare, may the power of the Holy Spirit touch you right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Someone you are having a problem with your nostrils. It's like you don't smell completely or it's that you don't smell well. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am praying for you. May the power of the Holy Spirit rest upon you now. There's someone's child here. I'm seeing like, like it looks like bipolar. You know, acting as like madness. Sometimes a person just begins to talk. I don't know who that person is. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, let there be healing for that person right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be healing right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a miracle right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. And any condition, whether I mention it or not, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. The Lord is showing me, I'm seeing someone, your child has autism. Autism. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, may the anointing rest upon that child right now. Let there be a supernatural miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing like a picture of a woman's womb. And instead of seeing a child there, I'm seeing like a big mass. I'm not a doctor. Just resting there. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't care what is the name of what is there. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. We command that devil to go out of that womb now. We command that devil to leave that womb now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore be healed. From the crown of your head. Even to the soles of your feet. Be healed in Jesus name. Be healed in Jesus name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Someone, your uncle, your uncle, I don't know, it's like you had a problem with your uncle. As I'm praying, check it now. You will see that that devil has gone. The pain is gone completely. Now, please check yourself. You find out there is a miracle. I want you to run right now. Miracles are happening everywhere. Please, if they are coming to testify, allow them whether they are coming from outside. Are you celebrating? Make your way to the front right now. The power of God is touching people. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do before. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. A miracle is happening there. Are you celebrating what God is doing? Huh. Check yourself. Don't sit back. The moment you find out Mama has been healed, something has happened to Mama. Are you celebrating Jesus? more people are coming the lord is touching people please check yourself check yourself check yourself there's there's someone i was i saw this when i was praying i'm still seeing it i don't know if it's that you could not use your left leg um it's like i don't know if it's that you cannot walk well or you could not walk completely but i'm seeing the lord heal that person wherever you are check yourself if you are seated or you're on a crutch stand up and trust god for healing Stand up, check yourself right now. Koinoni, are you celebrating what Jesus is doing? Hallelujah. We are going to take, please sit down for a few minutes. We will take a few, a few testimonies right now. Very quickly to the glory of the name of the Lord. Please let me know when you are ready so that we will hurry up. God is healing people. Supernatural healing. In the name of Jesus Christ. This man, what is that on your neck? 
It's a collar. Huh? You don't, you, your neck does not, you, you feel pain. Huh? Or you can't move your neck. Huh? It gravity. Let a doctor help us explain this, or I don't know what is. Okay, my neck gravitates to the left. When, Gra- I try, when I try to move it to the right, it goes back to the left. It doesn't move. So it goes back to the left. When oh, when you move, the neck moves back. Yeah, moves Dave, what is that? Yes, it's called torticolis. Yes, it's called torticolis. It's the spasm of the neck. It's, no matter what he does, it goes back to um, the intended position. Oh, it doesn't stay. It doesn't stay. Can I pray for you? Place your hand there. Carry your collar. Come with it. Someone help him. Where are you coming from, sir? Where are you coming from? From Abuja? Yeah. Place your hand there. Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't know what this is called, but I know it is demonic. In the name of Jesus, right now, I stretch my hands. Let there be a miracle for you. You see, something is happening to you. I'm seeing like fire just rest upon you. I wouldn't have called you except that I sensed that a miracle was happening to you. I cursed that devil now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know how long it has been, but right now I declare, let there be a supernatural miracle over your neck. In the name of Jesus. Sir, look at me. Look at me. Just place your hand there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Look at this. Keep it there. Keep it there. Keep it there. Turn. Keep it there. Look at this. Hallelujah. 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 Stop. Stand up. Do it again. Move left. Don't be afraid. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. Oh, come on. Hallelujah eh. Hallelujah eh. In the name of Jesus Christ Sir, please look at me I want you to believe in miracles Don't let the devil make you think you are just acting This is why not acting movies here In the name of Jesus Christ I declare that what has happened to you now It remains permanent In the name of Jesus Christ Please return to your seat rejoicing. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. So, please come. Very quickly, so, yes. Apostle, you gave a word of knowledge for, you know, people with problems with their wrists. With their wrists. Yes. So, these four people we're having here. Check, check yourself. Let's see it. Any pain? How long has it been for you? How, what of you? Two months. Four years plus. Four years plus. Check it now. Any pain? It's completely gone. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare it remains permanent by the power of the Holy Spirit. Permanent by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes, sir. So you also gave a word of knowledge regarding people with pains in their neck, their back, and and the waist. How long? Okay. It's been four years because I saw and it comes once in a while. I even forgot that the pain was there. I was standing in the gap for my family. Okay. And I began to feel heat sensation when you declared the pain. I began to feel the heat. So I, 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 I can, before now, I can bend. Bend now. Bend now. Any pain. Come on, Koinonia. Any pain. In the name of Jesus, I declare it will never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. So, 
Okay, pain, all of you here. Please come forward. Just bring them forward here. Where is... Okay, I will listen to all, but I want to listen to that mama's testimony. That, that, that our mother, I want to know what happened to her. In the name of Jesus, all of you here, please lift your hands. Every pain, whether around your joint, wherever it is, the miracle that has happened to you, the power of God is coming on one of you. I just saw light right now on one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be the end of it. Because yours is not just pain, this is witchcraft. I command that devil to go, never to return again. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. You are healed. You are healed forever. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Apostle, Mama has had challenge with her knee for over four years. She could not fold Your knee, her let her talk. Yes. She couldn't fold for the past four years. She went to the hospital. Before, before I can fold my legs. Please help us with the mic. Today, I can fold it. You can't before. fold your legs. Before. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Any pain? No. Look no. at this. Completely. For the past four years, sir. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you again. Go ahead. Very quickly. Movement in our body for the past five years. He says something snaky moves around. So when you mention the case, she touched her stomach and her chest, then she fell under the anointing, and now she's sound and whole. Where are you from? Lagos. Lagos. State of origin? Ogun State. In the name of Jesus, that devil leaves you now, never to return to you again. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes, this please. This boy has had kidney issues for years, so he couldn't breathe very well. When you mentioned the case, he fell under the anointing and now he, he couldn't can breathe. breathe very well. Now he can My breathe. My friend, breathe. Breathe in. <laughs> Look how determined he is. Breathe in and out. In the name of Jesus Christ, he will never, never return to you again yeah. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Spinal pain for the past two years. He said he couldn't turn his neck and he could not stand for long. But the power of God came upon him. Now the pain is gone. You, you, what do you mean you couldn't? I was always having discomfort. I can't find a Do what you couldn't do before. You couldn't do this before. Lift your hands. Stretch like you are stretching. Any pain. It's gone completely. In Jesus' name we declare it will never return to you again. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Okay, we are still on. Yes, sir. So, Apostle, this is God's miracle upon the two mamas we have here. Hallelujah. Speak in house, any Speaking language house, you can go ahead. Speak in it. Me fari and Zuama. Kigudu. Run. Oh, look at this. She's complaining that she, for a long time, she couldn't sell because of a pain on her limb, and now it's gone completely. It will never return to you, Mama, in the name of Jesus Christ. Go and excel. And I pray, in addition to this, may God prosper you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Yes, please. Let's celebrate God for her. Similarly, Mama also has okay. been having this problem for more than a year. Praise the Lord. This leg. Since uh, the COVID-19 lockdown, around March, I've been having these pains. I, can, I don't go out. I have this, if my husband is not going to church, I will not go to church because I cannot climb bike. But you can't climb bike? No, I can't climb back. I see my leg now. Yes? Come on, are you celebrating what Jesus has done? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, it will never, never return to you, Mama. You are healed now. You are healed forever. In Jesus' name. Let's celebrate her. Yes, please. Apostle, a very interesting case. She has a very strange condition. Well, I'm not a medical person, so I will not attempt to explain. <laughs> but, okay, so we have a medical person here, and I think... Okay, go ahead. Praise the Lord, sir. She just told me now that she saw conjunction in her chest. I she has to have... Conjection in her chest, so okay. she's able to breathe very well. Okay. Her lungs will be congested and all that. Then her BP is always high. So her blood pressure is always high. Yes. Okay. To confirm that, I asked her, "Can I go and bring our BP apparatus to confirm if it has actually gone down?" She said yes. So I went to bring it. So I had checked the BP now. It has gone up. I will have shown the camera. It was 129 to what what used to read 150 hundred and above before. Wow. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
we declare let there be a miracle for you right now your bp returns back to normal in the name of jesus christ amen and amen god bless you yes please so, Apostle, we have a very strange miracle here hmm. um, so please my god praise the lord my name is Remy Agilpo, a politician. Oh. Um, two weeks, the last um, miracle healing, miracle service, I came. Then I found out that I was healed. I, was, I, didn't, I didn't even think about it. I could walk around. My son was trying to video my everything. He was surprised. This is how miracle starts because he doesn't believe in all this. Well, I went from South Africa, I said, yes, it is. But the third day after the healing, I started having that feeling again. Then I said, what, what is that? So I called my son in South Africa who said, Mommy, your house must, must still have something that is not uh, of God. Hmm. So maybe he's in gas or something. But this today, today, yes. when I came, I was telling the, my neighbor who sat with me, I'm not sure. I have to walk out, walk about, and try and stretch my body. And, then which is like not and, and right now, what happened to you, Mama? I feel stronger. Hmm. Just a minute, Apostle, maybe just to jump in here. She actually had what they call a motor skill disorder. Her body begins to tremble. So, in fact, for her, that was a shock. So, her body shakes, and um, I think... Like, like Parkinson's? Yes. Or... Yes. So, um, I feel okay. Wow. But I can't count for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I hope I'm, I'm not mistaken. The one time governorship, governorship aspirant in Lagos. Oh, I'm my God. <laughs> Truly, oh, she stopped shaking. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm so sorry we didn't recognize to honor you. May God bless you, Ma. And even in politics, may God take you to the heights you desire. We declare that this devil of shaking all around your body as it has stopped now, it stops forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's celebrate her. Amen. Okay. Yes. Apostle. Mama has had lump in her abdomen for two years. Let now. us speak. Now the one strange thing about this is that the lump sucks her blood. So every time they give her blood, the, the lump will suck. Please let us speak. Uh, for the last since 2018. Is, is this I the best of the sound? Please help us. Since 2018, I was losing weight, and I went to my doctor. They found out that my blood level was low. And my stomach was hurting. There was a big lump, and it always hurt me. So when they give me blood, the blood will high, and then the following day it will go back down. So, and then I had heart problem, and then I was operated on my lungs because my blood was so low. So when I determined that I must come here. And that's why I wore two pieces. So that I said, when they were talking about this, I would put my hand on my stomach. And as I put my hand on my stomach, on this side, and as the apostle was praying, the Holy Spirit fell on me. And I felt the heat all over me. And now, the pain is gone. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit, it will never return to you again. And the Lord is taking away the spirit of death completely from your family. Where is your husband? He passed away in 2017. Where is your son? He passed away. I have my oldest son passed away in 2011. Every spirit that kills the men in your life, I use as a point of contact to pray. Whatever will make people suffer and when it's time for them to stay, they die. In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse that spirit now. And, and, my, and my youngest son passed in 2013. 2011, 2013, I lost all my kids. I have one son left. How many sons do you have left? One. Out of? Out of three sons. 
the oldest and the youngest. In the name of Jesus, Mama, don't worry. That one son we have, may God make him equal to ten sons together. That one son you have, we are standing as a family here to pray for you. That in the name of Jesus, you may not seem to have a husband and all the sons that should take care of you in old age may have gone. But if the son is here or maybe he's following online, we are praying for you. May God give you the strength of ten sons. In the name of Jesus. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Let's celebrate very quickly. Apostle, he gave word of knowledge of love in the breast. Ten years long in the breast. Ten, ten years. Ten years done. Disappeared, confirmed by the medical person. Please let her talk. Um, praise God. Hallelujah. It's on my left breast. I've, I've had it counting, I think, either ten years or more. Okay. I've, I've run the checks on it. They found in the hospital, but... You mentioned it, and shortly afterwards, I, I was able to put my hands in my clothes, and I don't... Completely, it's gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are you coming from? Here in Abuja. I live in Abuja. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare it will never return to you again, madam. It will never return to you again. In Jesus' name. Uh, let's see how many... Yes, sir. Let's see how many we can take so, more. So, Apostle, we need to get this. Um, we need to get this one. So, sir, I can't explain the, there was the name, the medical terminology. You know, these one. medical people, they frustrate us sometimes. You just stand and they call something that looks like um, a whole verse. Okay, apostle, the mother has lumbar spondylosis. Oh, I know that one. That yes. demonic thing that stops people from, I know yes. that one. For the past five years. So they've been trusting God and believing God for a miracle. Though the mother uses a lumbar corset. So okay. in the course of the service, he called them and asked them to connect in faith. And now the mother can do what she could not do. Ah. No more corset. From where? She where is your mother now? She's at home. She's at home. She, in Abuja yes, here? Sir. Yes, sir. Wherever she is, if she's fallen, Mama, we salute you, we congratulate you. In the name of Jesus, that miracle remains permanent. Yes. Lumbar spondylosis, in Jesus' name, you leave Mama and we declare she is healed now and healed forever. And you for standing, what are you trusting God for? No, I didn't say kneel down. Please stand up, our time is going. My friend, what are you trusting God for? Think before you talk, don't just speak. I'm... Yeah, don't be afraid. Um, I, 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 I heard this. God have told me that I'm, into, I'm called into ministry. Um, what I want is to have double portion of your anointing. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. You people uh, sit down. Our time is going. Listen. He's a very wise person. But... But let me, let me, let me, you think I'm going to just impart and say, go and read your Bible. You people think anointing is, mm -mm, God doesn't work like that. You are, you are, listen, my friend, don't worry. God is going to, it is, it is my joy that God will raise multiples of this. You get the point. But there is a process in the spirit, huh? But I want to pray for you. What do you do now? I mean, told me, I was doing business before, but if I start explaining it, it is, it is too long. Listen, I want you to take care of that, your mother first, eh? It's when you can eat all that you have the strength to even do what you are doing. So I want to pray for you. Stretch your hands. In the name of Jesus. Believe what I'm saying. Father, empower this, my friend. That one day you will come and stand here. May God use relationships to change your life. In the name of Jesus. May God raise a helper to just hold your hand and help you. I release this grace upon you. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes, please. Very quickly. Apostle, you spoke about the condition of malaria and... Hold actually, on, please. Hold on, please. So, she was actually placed on drip, right on this ground. Oh, you were placed on drip here by the medical team? Yes, sir. What happened to you? Malaria. And they... They placed you on drip yes. while service was going on. And an object was, has been moving around her body for how long? You see, all these objects that... See, throughout this week, one week ago... And, and right now, what happened to you? I'm okay. They removed the drip? Yes. <laughs> It's good to have medical people who have faith. Check yourself. Both of you, 
Are you sisters? I've been having migraine for over 10 years. So after the prayers, it comes back and malaria. So after the prayers, you mentioned the case. I was laying hands on my head. So I didn't want to come out because it has happened for over 10 years. So I went into the restroom because once I perceive anything that has fragrance, he sparks it off. So, but as I went in there, I couldn't even perceive anything. That was how I knew that I'm completely healed. You see, that's how you know it's a demonic thing. For both of you, in Jesus' name, let there be supernatural miracles for you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let's, let's see if we can Sir, take two or three very more. Striking testimony. Yes, you go ahead. Word of knowledge of HIV. HIV? Yes, she has gone to take the test now from the medical team. And, she's and it's, it's negative. Negative. 12 years. 12 years. She's Hallelujah. Hey. Listen, let, let, let me tell you this. We have, we have very professional medical people. So don't you think that it's just, we have very, some of our people work in some of the, 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 the renowned institutions in this city. So if I tell you that someone was checked, we are people of integrity, we will not come and embarrass ourselves before the world. Twelve years. Ma, how many years? Twelve years. You prayed with me September 14th. I came to see you with my husband after suffer, suffering from a lot of shame and reproach. Shame and reproach? Yes. And I thank God today. I and what happened now? It came up. This is the doctor. Yes, go ahead. I ran the test three times and it all came out negative. Now unto the Lamb upon the throne. We raise a sound, we raise a sound, for He's God and God alone. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Can I tell you this? HIV is a wicked and demonic whatever. And let me tell you, don't you think everyone who gets HIV got it from maybe living a wayward life? I have prayed for whole families where someone came in the dream, true story, with a syringe and injected them physic in the dream and they woke up physically with HIV. So not everybody you see with HIV... Don't stigmatize anyone. You see that now? Because there are people who have this thing for various reasons. But this is why God puts a miracle service. Imagine the shame and reproach. Three times. Three times. Father, ma Madam, don't cry, huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything you have lost as a result of this reproach. Not only has God healed you, but we declare a restoration. <laughs> Opportunities and all kinds of relationships you have lost. Let there be restoration right now. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. She has had severe heart issues. In fact, her, her brother is a medical doctor. Because of how serious the case was. Heart the, issue. Heart issues. She, weakness all around her body. She couldn't climb stairs. But the power of God came upon her. And she can raise up her hand very well. Give All her the this mic. she could not do before. Give when her the I mic. Came, during the prayer, I couldn't even raise this paper up. Like, I had to be bringing Raise my it up. up. Let the devil see it. Come, my dear. Run. Come and climb up. Hallelujah. 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 Heart condition couldn't even raise that thing up. You see how bad the devil is. 
If you cannot raise your hand up, the same way he brings down people's hands, he can bring down people's finances. He can bring down people's honor. Everything that has been brought down that you could not raise up, kaparus katebalakata, in the name of Jesus, here at this miracle service, if God could raise a hand back, may he raise your finances back. May he raise your honor back. May he raise your wisdom back. May he raise your fire back. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Quickly. You mentioned cases of skin rashes, hitches. The part of has had it since 2009. What is that? Skin hitches, rashes on the skin. Rashes? Yes. Okay. The no, no, no. Please, we don't have time for the text. Just straight the to the The power of God came upon him and yes. he sound now. Completely. Completely. The same thing with her. The same thing with you? Yes, sir. How long? What happened to you? I don't know. The, the, the skin rashes just came since six months now. I've been taking medications. Nothing. And, and you, now? You just mentioned I'm not feeling any... You're not feeling the itch yes. again. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you. In Jesus' name. Yes, sir. So, Apostle, just quickly... Three weeks ago, I had a miscarriage and I lost so much blood. And as a result of that, I've been having a numbing on my oh dear. left leg. So coming into this place tonight, I felt the power of God. And you mentioned my case. You said somebody came with a left knee um, problem. Three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. So immediately I felt perfectly okay. I can do everything. Do you have now. children? No. How long have you been married? Last year. Do you believe in miracles? Yes, sir. Place your hand on your stomach. Father... In the name of Jesus, look at me. You believe in Jesus? I stretch my hands right now in the name that is above all names. I command that devil I'm seeing, let her go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, out of her now. It's not miscarriage anything. These are demons from the pit of hell. Be delivered right now. Let me pray for everyone here. Trusting God for the fruit of the womb. In the name of Jesus, whether for you or your loved ones, I decree and declare, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, return with miracle children. Return with miracle children. Return with miracle children. My dear, tell her to write it. God will give her a baby boy. If her husband is here, write it. God bless you. In the name of Jesus. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old, for the Lord is doing a new thing for you. Yes, sir. So a person who has a very strange condition, when he sits under the AC, no matter how low it is, he begins to find difficulty breathing, and it actually affects him. So he has a very severe headache just from that experience. Once you sit under AC. Once he sits under the AC. So headache God, or Qatar? Man of God, I greet you in Jesus' name. Amen. And my name is Emmanuel. Um, uh, yes, just, just the so, condition. Yes. Sorry, because so, of time. So just for time's yes. sake, Apostle. So the moment you prayed for healing for people with migraines and all. Just a miracle for him. Instantly. For nine uh, years. Nine like years. For nine years. You can't and sit I'm under AC. Sit under AC. And any time I go out with my governor to work with him, I do cover my nose. And uh, immediately I, I come in today for the miracle service and I discover that I am supposed to remove my face mask. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. I pray for you. It is permanent. It never returns to you again. In Jesus' name. Please, let's have two here. Yeah. And then also? maybe, my God, there are so many testimonies. Do you know what? Let me tell you this. If you are unable to testify today, don't close down your testimony. We need to hear what Jesus is doing. The medical team, you can get it, we can collate it, and then by next week we can invite you to come and let the house know what Jesus is doing. It's not a good thing to be silent over profitable testimonies. They help strengthen the body. More than just showing that the man of God is powerful, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Just one, two, or three striking ones, and then we'll have... Yes, sir. So, sir, these are sportsmen, and... It will be interesting to actually hear what they have to say about their conditions. Yes, sir. Straight to the point. Yes, I have serious problem with my left leg. I'm in Abuja presently because the physiotherapist is taking care of the leg for like a month, my left leg. I what do you do? I play football. Oh, you're a footballer? Yes. I, I was playing for Kano Pillars before I had the injury and then I left for two years. So I can't really work well. I can't really play well. I've been struggling with it. I've done all the yes. scan and the rest. And then during the anointing, when he mentioned 
the left leg. Somebody cannot really do stuff. And there's yes. always pins there. So I didn't want to... I had to go to the bedroom and check. And then when I came back, my friend was sitting there. I said, Maduka, my leg, I can't feel the pain again. He said, check it now. Check it. Completely. You were playing for Cano Pillars before. Yes, sir. Can I pray? You really want to play football professionally. Let me pray for you. Look at me. My friend, believe in the power of God. You will be surprised. There is a grace that can shift people. I stretch my hands. What's your name? Shama. Shama. Tanzi. Don't rise and run away from God, though, because let me just give you a disclaimer. Most people, they use God. When they get there, they just dump Him and enjoy. God is raising people who love Him. But I stand by the God of heaven. See, there is a kingmaker anointing. Kingmakers never become kings themselves, but they can enthrone kings and dethrone kings. I stretch my hands now and I pray for you, my friend. Carry this grace. Go to the field. I pray that God will use you marvelously. You will be a source of pride to your family. Let this be the beginning of great days in your life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. So, I similar condition, but he popped his knee playing basketball. You're a footballer too? No, I was playing basketball a few, mix, a few months back. So, I popped my left knee. Okay. I couldn't walk. I was with a limb. And now? And now, as soon as you... Check can yourself. Can Check yourself. <laughs> Check yourself. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, this healing remains permanent and the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. Let's have a last one from this our little one. So, Apostle, this is interesting. He couldn't fold his legs, like bend his legs, but now... How old, how old are you, my friend? Eleven. Eleven? You couldn't fold your leg. What happened? I was playing ball. You were born that way? No, he okay, was playing ball. Okay, go ahead. Fold it now. Any pain? Any pain? Completely gone. Supernatural miracle. May God raise you to become a mighty vessel in his hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes, please, Apostle, very quickly. Three years partial deafness in the left ear. God, she couldn't hear properly with it. Your but left now, ear? Sir. How long? Over three years now. Can you imagine this? Yes, but now I can hear perfectly. Very clearly. Yes, very clearly, sir. May you hear the voice of your destiny helper. <laughs> that ear that has opened, whether spiritually I use because there is physical deafness there is financial deafness there is destiny deafness i'm praying for you the same way god opened her ears in the name of jesus christ in every realm of life where your ears cannot hear let it be open right now in jesus name you will not hear the voice of your enemy as that ear is open you will hear the voice of your helpers in jesus name i pray yes please Partial blindness. Her right eye, she couldn't see with it properly. So the doctor confirmed it. They asked her to close the left eye and then ask her to see. And How long, she can see. madam? Three months and nine. And you you could not see with which which of them? The right eye. Close the one you could not see with. Close the one you could see with. No, she's closing two of them. Close. How how do I tell her now? Yes. Madam, walk. Walk to the camera. Walk to the camera. Just follow the camera. Follow the camera. Look at what God is doing. Ah, look at this. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. That's all right. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, look at me. I decree and declare. You can, you can clearly see. When you see her eyes, you can see that this is almost as if she's completely blind. In Jesus' name, we correct this situation now. In Jesus' name. Please let that be the last for now so that we can. You mentioned pelvic girl pain. Are you together with the boy? Okay, so let's, let's just do it with the boy once and for all. And that will be it. Yes, please. The pelvic girl pain has gone down. Okay, what happened to you, Mama? I had a pelvic girdle pain, and for a very long time, but very, very lately, it's been very painful. So during the praise worship, I danced as if I, as I never danced before. So uh, 
yes. After I felt the pain was gone. Completely. Completely, but when pressing it, you will I still feel a bit of pain, pain, yes. But when the word of knowledge came, the pain was gone. Completely. Completely. Check it now. Any pain. Any pain. Secondly, there was something like a phlegm, like cough on my throat. Okay. I tried so many times to cough it out. But it let, let him testify with the boy. After, yes. But just now, it's gone. It's gone. It will never return to you again, Mama. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, please. Very quickly. If, if you are yet to confirm it, that's all right. We'll pray. You mentioned the case of bipolar. So it just came to present. Oh, uh, the in the name came. of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands over the little boy. How old is he? Nine years. Who is? Nine. 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 Yes. How old? Nine years. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands over the little one. Amen. Bipolar. Amen. Be completely healed right now. Amen. Okay, two of them. In Jesus' name, I lay my hands on both of them. Oh, you can see this one is not bipolar now. This looks like autism. In the name of Jesus, let there be healing for both of them. You know, sometimes these conditions can be so challenging. You can't imagine how it is. In Jesus' name, let there be a miracle for them. And I, I pray for all of you. We apologize that we didn't have the time. But I pray that your miracles remain permanent. In Jesus' name. And for all those who have received their miracles at home, I decree and declare supernatural healing for you. In Jesus' name. And it remains permanent. Can you stretch your hands here for a moment? We're about rounding up. If you can stand, please. This is the final stage. Apologies, it's a miracle service and sometimes it will stretch us a bit. Just stretch your hands in one minute as we decree and declare. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. This, for me, is one of the major parts of this meeting because this is the most accurate representation of people's desires. We see in part, we prophesy in part. doesn't matter who is healed. Sometimes you just cannot minister enough. But I want you to stretch your hands right now and begin to declare over these requests we decree and we declare online offline we declare by the spirit of the living god father we decree and declare let there be miracles turn everyone's mourning to dancing sorrow to joy in the name of jesus christ every garment of shame for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified i decree and declare right now over every request here i pray by the power that raised christ from the dead that every request here is turned for a testimony in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ I'm praying if there is any death sentence here represented in the name of Jesus, we avert it right now. Amen. Embarrassing financial conditions, we turn that shame and that reproach to honor in Jesus' name. I decree and declare that every victory that Satan may seem to be having over every life, we decree. The same way Jesus rose up from the dead. In the name of Jesus, everything that looks dead, it must come back to life. And as I would always declare, I decree upon these requests, that these Egyptians you see today, in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the living God, may you see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let me speak over your life. I truly believe in the power of prophecy. Every financial door, I just sense in my heart to pray. If you don't believe it, don't worry. Wait for what you believe that I'm talking about, then you'll receive. But I pray right now, every financial door that has been closed over everyone here, in the name of Jesus, causing all kinds of constraints and inconveniences, 
in the name of Jesus, let that door be opened now. Financial doors be opened now. Financial doors be opened now. For individuals, for institutions, for families, financial doors be opened now. So that you will have supplies that will give you the opportunity to focus on your work with God and your destiny. Again, I pray that those doors be opened now. Hear me? Anyone here who is in any kind of debt, personal debt, corporate debt, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, by the power that raised Christ up from the dead, come out of that situation now. Everyone who has promised to help you and has forgotten about you, in the name of Jesus right now, here at this miracle service, I decree and declare, let the book of remembrance be open concerning you. Let the book of remembrance be open concerning you. Hallelujah. There is a garment of favor that an individual can wear. And you can wear and move and everything around you will attest to the fact that you carry that garment. Every garment of shame and reproach, prophetically I remove it from you right now. And I decree and declare, for your shame, may God grant you access to the garment of favor. Favor in the city, favor in the country, favor in the morning, favor in the afternoon, favor in the night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please help them. I want to pray. If there is any addiction that the devil is using to trap you. Because many people's finances go because of all kinds of addiction. I decree and declare right now. Any addiction that is trapping your life, trapping your destiny. Here at this miracle service. The power of that addiction over your life. Let it be broken now. 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 We believe in winning families. Any family here that is under siege, troubles every day, joblessness, weakness, death, in the name that is above all names, I speak over every family here represented. Step into a new season of favor. I pray for your spiritual life. Because you see, no matter what else works in your life, if your prayer life, your word life, your passion for God and for the things of God, if it goes down, everything went down. Therefore, I decree in the name of Jesus. For someone's prayer life here that is yet to catch fire, I release my faith with you from tonight spiritual laziness that will not allow you pray that will not allow you fast that will not allow you study scripture in the name of jesus we declare the spirit that is behind it let it live your life now i declare fresh fire over your spirit man fire for prayer fire for word study fire for fellowship in the name of jesus christ Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again 
バイ